winner, Irish Medium Crossover SUV in the 2022 Car of the Year Awards. TEG, proud sponsors of TEG Cusick Park. Serving aviation, biopharmaceuticals and medical industries across the globe. TEG has been to the fore in the fight against COVID-19 with our customers and partners. A local business employing local people. Visit teg.com forward slash careers to learn more. Wishing all our GAA patrons a safe passage through the championship. Stevens Coaches, proud sponsor of Wesley GA Hurling Championships. MJ Stone Building and Development, proud sponsor of Wesley GA. Exactly what your job is. That's what I do. New Renault Arcana e Tech Hybrid. Winner Irish Medium Crossover SUV in the 2022 Car of the Year Awards. <laughs> Music Park here for this afternoon's 11 coaches senior hurling championship final between Loch Lane Gales and Raharney. And look at it's coming near, it's squeaky bum time, it's coming near when they come out onto the pitch. The game is about to start. And Damien Maher, you know, a lot of people, and looking around here, there's huge colour here, as much colour as I've seen in Cusick Park in, in quite an amount of time. Huge attendance, even terrace is beginning to fill up as well so you know very much anticipated not just by the Raharney men I suppose and Lachlan Gills but very much anticipated by the neutral in Westmead as well this county final yeah absolutely big day for the hurling fraternity in the county and uh, let's hope uh, a great final in store because conditions um, absolutely ideal. ideal absolutely ideal um, I know we had rain that during the week but the pitch is in, in, in Super Nick yeah two great teams um, Raharney coming in as favourites it must be said um, an awful lot of experience in, the, in their side but Lachlan Gales uh, certainly they won't be overawed it's 14 years since they were here they'll be very determined to push them all the way yeah, and Alan, yeah, you've you've been uh, uh, seen both of these because you've been on the sideline for both uh, against the, both of them in the championship so far this season, and you know like, people writing off the gales at their peril here today. I think. Oh, absolutely! Like the two teams, the two teams that under merit are both deserving to be in the in the county final. Lachlan Gales are really really good against us in the in the semi final. Uh, no qualms about it. The, the best team on the day one, no doubt about that. And listen, if Rarity come in undercooked and think that they're going to walk. All over them today, they could they could get a series come up, series come up, at the end of the day. But at the same time, Raharney have an unbelievable forward line that Lachlan Gales are going to have to really, really stamp down on really, really early. If I, if it was me, I'd probably play someone else back, an extra player in defence just to keep it tight at the start. But at the same time, two very, very uh, free flowing teams here today, and it's going it's going to be tighter than people think, I'd say. Yeah, but Paula Hearn, we, we spoke about this in the football last week. You know, St. Lomas come in here as overwhelming favourites. It's it's very much the same here today. You know, it, it, it's it's more about how how Lockley and Gales cope with the fact that they are going in as underdogs. Will it be a driving force? Will it be a hindrance to them? I, I, I think personally, they're happy to be in the position that they are, you know. Coming in slightly under the radar. After beating last year's defending champions, you have to put that out there. Ah, uh, yeah, look, I mean... The labels, I, 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 to be honest with you, I don't think they play a role for either team in reality. You know, you can kind of utilise and go, yeah, we're underdogs and nobody's expecting this out of them, whatever. You get to a county final, you're a good team. Raharney aren't going to be sitting there going, ah, yeah, this is going to be grand. They're not a great no, team. That's not we should win. That's, that, that just doesn't... With quality players like you have in Raharney, they don't think that way. They're just focused on their own performance. And, you know, look, the same for Lachlan Gales. are going, it's a massive opportunity for them. And, you know... They really fancy themselves to go by us here, like in terms of you know. Yeah, really don't chant it. Don't chant it bad now, or you no, get a, like, you know, you get the boss of a hurl across the back. They've got a chance, and uh, like er every team in the final has a chance. It's how you react to the situations that happen, how you actually develop your own performance and react to what the opposition are doing. That's what the key is, yeah. and you know, can you stay doing that for as long as you can? That's the key. Yeah, and, and indeed, Damien, the Gales have operated under 
adversary for a lot of the season. Like, I mean, let's be honest about it. Tommy Doyle hasn't been available for most of the season. He's back today. Where they play him, I suppose, is going to be the imponderable. We discussed this the other night and up for the game. Will they play him in the forward line? Will they play him in defence? Will, 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 as, Jerry, as Jerry Buckley said, I'd play him in a wheelchair. You know, it, it, it's that kind of scenario here today. Where, where do they play the jogger? But equally for a Harney, you know, they have so many quality players. Like Killian Doyle didn't play the early rounds of the championship. He came back. He's on a, an absolute roll. I think their forward line in general has been excellent. But equally so, the Gales' defence have stepped up, in particular, in my opinion, the last couple of games. And if, if I was to name a player of the championship today, my player of the championship would be, without question, Dan Higgins at fullback for Loch Lane Gales. So, you know, there are imponderables there. Who's going to pick up who? The matchups are going to be hugely important here today. Yeah, and they've had a few promising young players, the likes of Owen Daly as well. Yeah. Big, tall, uh, hurler, uh, athletic player. He'll bring a lot to this game, I expect. Tommy Doyle is listed at wing forward. Tommy Doyle is most effective, in my view, when he's coming forward onto the Fair ball the from ball, three yeah. or six. But the Gales are going to have to bring something different to the table today. And what they'd like, and I think what, what the game is going to need, is for Doyle is the key man for Doyle to get on that ball and get the inspirational scores and that's what's going to turn this game if there is a flaw in the system by the way it's the fact that there's only one semi-final yeah. for all the good things that we've seen with the hurling championships and it's great to have the senior B that's a welcome addition there is a flaw there should be two semi-finals now the question is are Raharney undercooked Perhaps they're not, because it's a dual club out there, and yeah. those players would have been playing football, Play football with Kalukan, yeah. so maybe they might appreciate the break. However, you can't beat a competitive semi-final. Lachlan Gales have had that against the, the defending champions, Castle Dungagan, and that might stand to them. Yeah, and, and, and Alan, speaking of that, if, if you were in Joey Williams' shoes today, as, as probably you were hoping to be, you know, to be the opposition for a, a, a county final against Raharney, what would be your modus operandi? Like, wh where would you be targeting Raharney as as a team as, as, and as a manager? Well, you'd have to shut them. You'd have to shut the forward line down first of all. Like, they they have the best six forwards in the county in terms of club level. They have the best six forwards in the county, and you really have to shut them down early. Like, you need to be still in the game with ten or fifteen minutes to go to make sure you get over Raharney because you won't beat them by you won't beat them by eight or nine points. That's that's just not going to happen. So you have to make sure that you're still in with a fighting chance of ten or fifteen minutes to go. I would try and maybe shut it up at the in defence as much as I could early and, and then maybe go out in the second half but at the same time if you're going to go out of Harney you really really have to probably try and get as much ball into that full forward line uh, for Lachlan Gales as you can don't be surprised to see Jogger in full forward at the start for the first 10 or 15 minutes that they're just going to lure a few long high balls in teams are teams this year Robin, maybe, yeah. yeah exactly teams this year are, are making hay with every team if you ask me like with us and with with, with Harney like didn't Father Don score or four goals yeah. against Raharney at the start and what they did was just lurried ball straight in on top of the full back line I know Jamie Mulcairns wasn't there for the first two games but still at the same time the, if you're going to score goals the ball has to go in and uh, into that square at, at stages so uh, that's what I, I wouldn't be surprised if Jogger was sitting in there but I would be more worried about uh, for Raharney's uh, point of view as where Jogger's playing. I wouldn't be worried about Lachlan Gales. They could play him anywhere. You could play him anywhere from, from 2 to 15. He'll, he'll operate anywhere. It's just all about trying to, to get the best out of him today. And if they do get the best out of Jogger today, like he has been struggling with an injury the last few weeks with his knee, but if they get the best out of him today, they could be very, very hard bet. Yeah, and, and, and Paul, look at we look, we look down through uh, smatterns of inter-county players on, on both sides. Players who have given tremendous effect. And I'm, I'm, I'm listening to this mantra, wouldn't it be great for Derek McNicholas to win a county title, you know, uh, for all he's given to his club and his county. Raharney won't care one jot about that. They'll be trying their absolute... Have no illusions about it. I know Raharney people. They want to win county titles. They, they will have no sentiment in them whatsoever. Oh. Uh, look, look what he got. I mean, look, it would be nice for him, absolutely, without question of doubt. But you could probably list off between the four of us another 40 players in Westmead who would have been who, nice if they got one. It, who haven't won one and would have been nice if they got one yeah. as well from that point of view. Look, you know, I think, like to Alan's point, Jogger is a massive key player for, for, for Lachlan Gales. I think the key is that to keep him in positions where he can impact the game. I don't think he's going to impact the game wing, wing forward. Wing forward, I agree with you. Um, from that point of view, and you know they they need to get him in a place where he can actually have an impact. From that point of view, I think like you know I, I was chatting to Alan there just before we came on. Like 
you know, key player for Lachlan Gales is Shane Williams. Like, yeah. a, a, against Castletown, I, I just thought he was like, absolutely. He was on everything around the middle third. He was just getting ball after ball after ball after ball. And he created a platform for most things that Lachlan Gales did. And, and, and essentially that kind of, that battle between the Gales half back line and the Raharney half, half forward, forward line, line yeah. is a very, it's very tasty one. And, and the same, the half forward line, the other side, those, yeah. those two half back, half forward battles are going to be really, really fascinating. There's quality players throughout all 12 of those players. Yeah, Manny and Ponderville's here as we're getting ready for the Slevin's Coaches Senior Hurling Championship final. We're going to take a little break now. We'll be back with you again very, very shortly. Please do stay with us, whether you're in Lapland or the Antarctic. Doesn't matter, stay with us. TEG, proud sponsors of TEG Cusick Park. Serving aviation, biopharmaceuticals and medical industries across the globe. TEG have been to the fore in the fight against COVID-19 with our customers and partners. A local business employing local people. Visit teg.com forward slash careers to learn more. Wishing all our GAA patrons a safe passage through the championship. Slevin's Coaches, proud sponsor of Wet Lead GA Hurling Championships. MJ Stone Building and Developments, proud sponsor of Wet Lead GA. exactly what your job is. That's what I do. New Renault Arcana E-Tech Hybrid. Winner, Irish Medium Crossover SUV in the 2022 Car of the Year Awards. Yeah, welcome back after that word from our sponsors. Ladies and gentlemen, we had a talk with Ray, had a chat with the managers, Joey Williams and Joe Flanagan, the managers of both sides here. So we're going to go over to those uh, interviews, first of all, with Joey Williams, the manager of Lachlan Gales. We're joined here by Joey Williams here on the pitch here as his team go through the warm-up for today's seven coaches final. Joey, how has preparation gone since the semi-final? Yeah, we went, we went well now. In fairness, we have everyone flying pitch today and hopefully all goes well on the day now. That's it. I mean, you had the advantage in the semi-final. You think it's a pound as we get? Laura Harvey been sitting for four weeks. I don't know. I don't think it is. Today is a new day. It's a new game, and it takes its own course. So hopefully we're up for that. We're going to be up for that. And you know, Joy, as you said at the far end of the field, the result that happened during the league campaign counts for nothing here today. No, no, 100% it counts for nothing. We're, we're a different animal today, though. We're, we're here to do a job. And we're well, I, I know there's great hype out in the village, uh, Joe, so the very best of luck to you. Joined here before the game. Joe Joe Flanagan. Gerard, it's a great place to be. Sun shining here in TG Cousy, the County Final Day. Yeah, what an unbelievable day for a Westmead County Final. You know, you couldn't ask for. We couldn't ask for better, the conditions, the grounds, you know, credit to the, the people here in Westmead there for getting the, the pitch and the condition it is, you know, after the weather we're after having the last three or four weeks, you know. Speaking of the condition, your lads are in good condition, ready to go here today? Yeah, we're in good condition, I'm sure Loch Lean Gears are too, you know, it's going to really come down to the wire, I'd say, you know, they have, both teams have a lot to prove today now, you know, and it's going to be a right back you know, and we're, we're, we're all looking forward to it. And, Hopefully, we, both teams will perform and make a good game of it. You know? you, you're experienced enough, Jared, to know that the game in the group stage is going to count for nothing here no, today. Count for nothing here today. It's a new game. Uh, probably even new teams out. You know, the personnel is going to be slightly different. Just a game like today can take on a, a mind of its own. You know? So every ball is so important. And it's always the, the next final. ball, the next ball, and just see. See where it takes us from there. Gerald, we'll let you go and continue the warm up with your side here. That's Sheriff Flanagan, the Harley manager here today before this 2023 county final. The best of luck to you all today. Yeah, welcome back to TEG Cusick Park for the Levens Coaches Senior Hurling Championship final between Loch Lane Gales and Raharney. And I suppose, Damien, at the start of the year, it's probably not the final. You and I, we, we always have a little bit of a chat before before the season starts as to who we think it is probably going to be there. 
Gales probably wouldn't have been top of the list to we get there. Raharney probably would have been there, but the Gales probably wouldn't. And, and it's a great credit to them to, to come through the adversity that they've come through. They've lost a game, lost a couple of games, and yet they're still here on County Final Day. And they've broken through that kind of hoodoo of, of Castletown, Clankill and uh, Raharney and, and have made a final. You know, first time in a long time. Yeah, absolutely. Raharney coming here with 14, uh, just checking there, 14 senior hurling titles, twice as many as the Gales. Yeah. So, uh, you know, in that respect, uh, nice to see uh, Lachlan Gales back and Colin Stone represented on county final day. And the break from uh, the grip, the likes of, no disrespect to Castletown, Gagan and Clonkill. Fantastic clubs, it must be said, doing fantastic work. But nice for the neutral to see Lachlan Gales here. And let's hope they can put it up to a very experienced uh, Raharney side. And let's hope that too, okay, tactics are going to play a part. They'll want to shut down that, or uh, try to shut down that um, rather explosive looking uh, Raharney forward line led by Killian Doyle there at centre forward. You know, great workers as well, it must be said, the likes of Joey Boyle, Rory Keyes. They'll be working right back beyond midfield to set up attacks. So a very strong Raharney forward line. Yes, the Gales will want to bring something to the table in terms of shutting them down, but they'll have to as well go in search of those scores because ultimately they're going to need scores on the board. We saw there was 30 scores in the minor match. Yeah. So conditions today couldn't be any more ideal. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, and, and in speaking of that, conditions are absolutely perfect here, Alan. What we want is a really good game of hurling. Let's be honest about it. From a neutral perspective, anyway, we want a really good game of hurling. I really don't want to see a, a, a lopsided game of any description. And I don't think it will be. You know, I, I, th I think the hunger that the Gales will bring to it will be equally matched. Like, people are talking about the hunger the Gales bring for not being here in a long time. Raharney bring a hunger to every game. It was an under-12 Camogie game. They bring a huge hunger to every game because they love to win. Yeah, absolutely. I see, the thing, probably the thing going against Lachlan Gales slightly is that Harney weren't even in the county final last year. Yeah. Like, they, if they had won the county final or, or had even been beaten in the final last year, they might have been just a little bit undercooked coming in. The, this Raharney team now are serious favourites to win this. They're a good outfit. They're really, really good. But at the same time, Joey Williams won't have to get any bit of uh, hunger into no. Lachlan Gales no. coming out onto the field today. They probably and a proud Gales man himself. You know, has absolutely, won yeah. Well. And, and, and his management team, they all, all the management team won loads of championship medals they didn't just win one or two they're a very very uh, coloured uh, management team to be fair in terms of county medals but at the same time if, um, if Lachlan Gales keep this game tight they have to keep this game tight they're, they're, as, as Paul was saying earlier on no one's going to hand this no one from Harney is going to hand that no, trophy no. over and say there you go and, no. and have a good time we'll try to get back off you next year for Harney will be as hungry uh, but at the same time Raharney will have to get really, really tight in this Lachlan Gales forward line. Lachlan Gales probably would have been hoping there would have been a bit of rain, uh, to be honest, because they played really, really well in the rain against us in the semi-final. Uh, really, really well. And, uh, and the work rate and everything like that was second to none. The outwork cast down on the day, there's no doubt about that. But so they would be hoping that it was a bit of rain, but it's not. And they have to go ahead with what, what's sitting in front of them. So in my eyes, that uh, if they can keep it tight, and they really, really keep it tight, and, and tear into Raharney. Let's be honest about it. If you stand off this Raharney forward line, they will punish you all day long. And in fairness to Raharney backs, they're quite good. People give them, I don't give them enough credit. They're really really tight and they're tigerish and they're tenacious but at the same time if 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 they meet fire with fire today Raharney are going to bring plenty of fire but if the Gales can up their work rate and really again even more than they did in the semi-final if they can up that and keep it tight they will be very very hard bet today yeah and, and, and Paul Hearner just looking at physically if you look at it the Gales are a far taller maybe even stronger looking side than Raharney if you look at it from a physicality point of view you know, I, I don't think the Gales have used that physicality so far in the championship. You know, the likes of Owen Daly, Michal Daly, huge men. Brendy, Benny, Doyle, the jogger. You know, I, I think Alan, Alan made the point earlier on. Take a chance earlier on. Pump in a few high balls. Put the Straharney defence under a small bit of pressure. Put a little bit of doubt into the minds. You know, if, if, if I was Joey Williams, which I'm, uh, which I'm about the same size, but that's about we all we have in common. But, you know, you, there has to be something different. You know, there has to be some sort of game plan that he has. 
I know without look, I mean without doubt the Gales have put together a game plan and, and, and they've looked at Raharney and analysed them and see where they can kind of either, either expose their weaknesses that they might see or where they can take advantage of them and where they can kind of shore themselves up and, and, and not let Raharney on top. I don't to be fair, I think both teams are excellently conditioned. I don't and I, I really don't think that'll be an issue in the actual game. I think personally I think where this will come down to is goals. If Lachlan Gales can keep a clean sheet or close to a clean sheet and not can see goals and they can bag two or three themselves and be in the mix and maybe get those goals closer to the end I think that's where they'll, where they'll get it and that might be holding Jogger back and putting himself and McNicholas in on the edge of the square towards the end of the game and hoping you're in the game up until then Raharney, like if they get a run on you they have real good forwards that can just go and clip over 1-4, 1-5, 1-6 in very quick succession and then you're trying to claw back momentum and, and I think that's the key for the Gales, can they just slow the game down, don't let Raharney get a ton of steam up, a head of steam up and get momentum, Raharney is just going to want to get purple patch and just drive that on from there and clip over points Yeah and Alan you've seen that purple patch from Raharney like Castle probably looking favourites going into the last five, six minutes of that game against the Gales but at the same time you always felt there was a bit of a kick you always we were up in the press box going there's something going to happen here you know you always felt there was something in them just yeah. just that attitude that they have it's just they will not give up until the final puck no the absolutely and listen I was hoping that it wasn't going to happen but it did happen and, and at the end of the day you have to get lucky to win any championship Raharney had to get lucky in a couple of games this year they were beaten in the first game they had to win the rest of the games to make sure that they went straight through to the county final so little things like that go, go a long way you will not win a championship it doesn't matter who you are let, let it be Limerick or whatever you won't win a championship unless you the, the little bit of luck goes your way every now yeah. and again Lachlan Gales got that in the semi-final there's nothing to say that it won't get again here today yeah. but at the same and time sometimes you need that to put your name in the cup yeah absolutely but at the same time they really have to I know what I'm saying about the forward line but they have to stop Robbie Greville coming out with easy ball yeah. Robbie Greville comes out with easy ball and gets gets a couple of seconds to pick out to pick out a couple of, of lads with easy pass in the half forward line or the full forward line that'll, that'll really punish them and they have David Hickey and Cormac Boyle on, the, on two wings yeah. they can do the exact same as Robbie yeah. if they're getting ball out into their hands with no one putting pressure on them and able to pinpoint passes it doesn't matter what sort of backs you have on this Raharney forward line that they'll punish them regardless if there's no pressure on the ball going in yeah well we're coming near uh, the band coming in which is going to be the start of the game we're coming near where we hand over to Ray so Damien one word who's going to win this uh, Raharney uh, they're, the, they're the team with all the experience and as a neutral what I want to see here is the jogger dial on Jamie McCurrens in round the edge of the square let's see that battle okay okay Alan um, I think it'll be a two to three point win for Raharney just about now Raharney are you going to well, book the trend here? Logically, like I would say, Raharney, um, what do you call it? I think, like, on balance, they've probably just got a bit more firepower from that point of view. I think, like, Al, it'll probably be a lot tighter than people think um, from that point of view. I think if it's in the mix, coming into the last three or four minutes, two points in it, I'd be really interested to see that battle on the edge of the square between Jogger and Jamie Mulcairns. <laughs> Wouldn't Anything we all? Happen. Well, as the town band enter here on the county final day, to bring the occasion to a head. We're going to go to an ad break and straight after that, it's up to Ray in the Crow's Nest for commentary on the Westmead Senior Hurling Final, the Slevin's Coach Senior Hurling Final. Lock Lane Gales and Raharney. The talk is over, boys. Time to put the hurls in the hand and get ready for the game. TEG, proud sponsors of TEG Cusick Park. Serving aviation, biopharmaceuticals, and medical industries across the globe. TEG has been to the fore in the fight against COVID-19 with our customers and partners. A local business employing local people. Visit teg.com forward slash careers to learn more. Wishing all our GAA patrons a safe passage through the championship. Slevin's Coaches. Proud sponsor of Westmead GA Hurling Championships. MJ Stone Building and Developments. Proud sponsor of Westmead GA. And you, what do you do? Mm, it's a bit complicated to explain. Hey, hey. You know, I still didn't get exactly what your job is. That's what I do. New Renault. 
Huracana E-Tech Hybrid. Winner, Irish Medium Crossover SUV in the 2022 Car of the Year Awards. And you're welcome back to the commentary box here for this 11th coaches senior A hurling final and I'm joined by Pat O'Brien, former Cast on Gagan manager and Pat, conditions absolutely ideal we have to say for a hurling game here today. No wind, no rain, no nothing, so certainly no excuses for either of these teams. Absolutely, you couldn't have picked a nicer day in the month of October, it's a credit to the groundsmen, everybody, everything looks splendid out here today, so there's no breeze, there's no rain, the ground is in perfect condition, so ideal game of Hurland is expected, so the players have just get on with it. Yeah, Pat, I know you've seen uh, Lockdown Gales in their semi-final victory over uh, your own cast town gig, and were well, you impressed with them, Pat, or the, you know, uh, how, how do you think they'll fare in this one today? Look at, I suppose if you were to go by statistics and go by the bookies, Collins Town are, are in trouble today, but it's a two-horse race, they're in the final. Finals take a life of their own. It's there to be won. It's, it's there for Raharney to lose it, I suppose, if you're to be honest about it. But in saying that, the odds don't always favour those who, who, who think that they're supposed to win. Last Sunday, we had a football championship final, and Kenny Gadd, I suppose, if they were to rerun it, said probably didn't have enough of belief in themselves, and it just shows how tight finals can be. So I would expect Collins Town to give it absolutely everything. They have brought the whole parish with them today. They have been involved in the minor final beforehand. So it's a huge spectacle, and it's, it's great to see a new team in the county final because the three big teams have dominated for the last 10, 15 years in Westmead. So it's good for the game to have a new team involved. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, and I know I, I keep saying it to people that are probably sick listening to me, but on the very, very first podcast before the championship, I asked the question, would anyone be able to break the monopoly of the three teams? And, you know, fair play to the Gales. They have been knocking on the door. They're probably the fourth best team for a while, and they eventually got a couple of wins and got into, this, into a county final. Yeah, well, that's true, but uh, I, during those podcasts, I used to say, uh, Collins don't have the ability to beat any of the one of, one of the top three teams at any day. Can they go along and beat two, and can they go along and beat three? Now they have beaten both, Rahar, they have beaten, beaten Cloncale and Castletown along the way, so the third one is in front of them, Raharney, which probably will prove the most difficult because Raharney at the moment are a seasoned team, but they seem to be almost at full strength and they have had a month, I suppose, to get prepared for this final. So it'll be interesting to see, but I would reckon that the Collins Town need to hit the ground running. They need to be in front from the start because if you're chasing Raharney, it's going to make it very, very difficult for them. Yeah, and it's, it's hard to see many weaknesses on that Raharney team. You know, from their full back line right through to their full forward line, they have quality. And I know, again, you've mentioned it on numerous occasions, they have, I think, five... Um, forwards that are capable of playing inter-county hurling or have played inter-county hurling so you know the Gales backs are in for like could be in for a torrid time here yeah well that's true like I mean Raharney have been very supportive of Westmead hurling down through the years and especially this era like to have f six or seven top class players there who have been backbone for Joe Fortune's team but especially up front like with the two dials like as the, as the saying goes they could hurl in the phone box like they're risky hurlers they're, they know where the goals is Joey Boyle is a good man catching a ball good for scores the, this own keys very very lively his brother obviously if he's on the team and he's keeping out Brian McGrath he must be going well in training and I was very impressed the last day with young Owen O'Hare and he scored two goals against Collins Town in the previous round and they were top top class goals so like it, Collins Town will have a battle on their hands but they must be in this game with you know coming close to half time that you know that's not got away from them so that's why it's vital that they get a good start to the game yeah both teams heading over to get ready to march behind the Monagar Town Band and with that now we might take an opportunity for our viewers at home to go through the two teams and how they line out and we'll start off with the Lock Lane Gales team you know both teams I'll say are lining out as what's going to be on your screens at home but the Lock Lane Gales line out in goals number one Noel Connerty the captain of the team Philly Riley is at number two Dan Higgins the full back at three and Daniel Riley at four in the half back line John Egan's at five Dara Quimmer at six and Shane Williams at seven Middle of the field today will be Brendan Dial at 8 and Michal Daly at 9. In the half hour line, Tommy Jogger Dial at 10, David Williams in the centre half hour at 11 and Owen Daly at 12. And the inside line, Derek Mickey is wears 13, Jason Malone the full forward is 14 and Marcus Kennedy at 15. 
and Raharney, they line out as follows. In goals, number one, Aaron McHugh. The full-back line, Conor McHugh is at two, Jamie Mulcair is the full-back at three, and Darren Finn at four, he's vice-captain of the team. In the half-back line, Conor Boyle will wear number 25, but as he has done all through the campaign for his team. Robbie Gravel, the captain, is at six, and David Hickey at seven. Middle of the field today, Eamon Cunyi wears eight, and Gary Gravel at nine. In the half-forward line, Rory Keyes at 10, Killian Doyle, the centre-half forward at 11, and Joey Boyle at 12. And the inside line today for Raharney is Owen Keyes at 13, Kieran Doyle at 14, and Owen Ahern completes the Raharney line of wear number 15. Referee for today's game, Mickey Dan Murta from the Clunkill Club. And before we settle in to watch the town band and watch the team's parade, I have to say hello to my good friend, the one and only Tommy Gallagher. I know you're listening, Tommy, because that was a lovely photograph that you forwarded there earlier on during the presentation of the minor game. So, Tommy, we hope you enjoy the game here today and that you're looking after yourself out there in Australia. Pat, you know, we see all the, the hype that the county final brings for a new team, all the mascots going out to join the Loch Lane Gales team, and Raharney, they'll just concentrate on doing their own business. Yeah, Raharney are here before their season. Like, what my fear for Collinstown is that I think, apart from maybe Derek and the goalkeeper, Noel, the rest of them is it's, it's, it's a new venture. Like, and your first county final, you'll always be that little bit ap apprehensive of it, and you're nervous going into it, and you're worried about the first ball or two. And, of course, I think. I think Raharney will just say, look at we win our own ball, move it on, play our own game. Like, I, I would expect big things from the likes of David Williams, who played superbly in the semi-final, but I also expect Gary Greville will probably drop from midfield back into man Markham, which will release Robbie to do the sweeping job that he normally does. And Kieran Doyle or someone will come out to crowd around the middle of the field and leave a little bit of space inside for the likes of the Keys brothers and Kieran or Killian Doyle, Joy. And if they get a little bit of space, it could be trouble for Collinson. That's my only fear for them. So hopefully it'll be a good game of hurling. The likes of Derek McNichols, one of the, I suppose, Stalwarts for Collinstown and Westmead over the last 10, 12 years. It, uh, from a neutral's point of view, it would be lovely to see him win a county championship medal. But there's no sentiment in Hurland. He has to go out and earn it today. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, Raharney will be... They won't mind seeing Terry Pindictus right off into the sunset with no county medal or no county or Tommy Dyer and the rest of them. Raharney are in here today. They had luck press of Pat through the, through the last couple of games in the campaign. They eliminated Clunkill in their last game, I think it was in Lachlan Gales in the game before that, where we see Nona Heron showing his brist blistering pace to get in for two goals that they up at the at the far end here on their left hand side. So look at it's going to be a ding dong. I'm not, uh, after yesterday's game, I'm not going to say we're hoping for a, expecting a close and exciting game, but we hope for that. We hope the Gales hit the ground running and for the neutrals. We're hoping for a good game here. Absolutely. Look, I mean, you, you can never predict, but on form, Raharney have been shown very, very good form up from, I suppose, after the first round game. They have been slowly building it up. They have a very settled team. They have proved in the last two games that they were, their, their purpose was to win the county championship back that the last had got two, two years ago. So, look, at, it's all to be played for. Hopefully we get a good game. Yeah, our on the V now is going to be sung by Grace McDonald from the Dunta, the Downs Club here. She's going to sing it for now, so we'll listen to her. Impeccably there, performed by Grace McDonald. 
and the Mullingar Town Band make their way off. Pat, looking at the way the two teams have headed to either side of the field, it looks like that Loch Lane Gales are going to play it from right to left as we look out here from the stand here in TG Cusick Park. And last few words of wisdom at this stage as a, t as a town band, but I don't expect either team to line out as select. I expect to be positional changes all around the place. Yeah, well, sure, this is, I suppose, the curse of the managers. Nobody knows who's playing where until they actually set up, and then we're looking around to see where the guy's gone. But look, at it, a day like today, you should be able to put Hurling in any position because it's perfect for Hurling, absolutely perfect. Yeah, Kieran Doyle wearing the number 14. He's gone out to partner. Gary Gravel in the middle of the field, and the referee, Mickey Dan, gets us underway, and it, it is... The, Harney men to kick the ball out into a little bit of space but no one able to get clean possession the first rock of the game here is the ball kicked out and eventually picked up and going to ground there is the Loch Lane Gales man it's Shane Williams and Shane leaves it back there and the ball delivered long in on front of the full forward position here but Robbie Gravel goes back sweeping back in here the wins possession lays off the hand pass to Connor Boyle and through the hands it goes here now Eamon Cunyon and Cunyon to Boyle Boyle playing through the line Joey Boyle controls the first in front of John Egan and then flicks the ball back out here where Rory Keyes has possession Rory a long pan pass back to Gary Gravel Harney, not delivering the ball in first time, but eventually nailed off to Killian or to Kieran Dyle. And Kieran fires it in, and the first touch of the game for Noel Connolly, intercounty keeper, fires it out here. David Williams tries to pull in the air. The ball is blocked down. John Egan can't get it in the first attempt, and Joey Wilde steps in and robs it. Joey back to Kieran. Kieran this time didn't take the shot. Looks for Conor Point. Owen Daly was there, and then the shot blocked down there. and it is the Gale Center. They have three players back here. Brendan Doyle can't get it up into his hand at the first attempt. Gone very close to the sideline. The lines went signals. First line ball of the day come from Davy Williams or, and for Loch Lane Gales. But Pat nerves on show here. Raharney getting a few touches, but again, one strike really, and it's been you know a mixed bag for the opening minute yeah, or so. It's look at there's lots of enthusiasm and energy, but nerves are definitely it's a team that settles the quickest it's going to get off the scoreboard, but at the moment it's tit for tat. Yeah. Yeah, and the ball comes in and David Williams has the first chance to have a look at the post and David Williams opens the score for the Loch Lane Gales and a minute and 46 seconds on the clock and Pat, that's exactly the start yeah, that absolutely. David Williams needed as well yeah. as his team Yeah, no, a great strike a very confident strike that'll do good for his free taking as well Yeah, long, long puck out Shane Williams gets a hand on it, goes to ground. Who's on the breaking ball? It's the Raharney men that have it again. Over there on the far side, Owen Heron comes back out. But the Gales work it back here. And now there's a chance for Kieran Dial. And Kieran, he had a sighter a few minutes ago and was short with that one. But sides are level here. The yeah, a little bit of loose play on behalf of Collins Town. Kieran Doyle left isolated in the middle of the field. Good score. Yeah, Puck Owl is already gone from Old County over on the far side of the field. Looks for Tommy the Jogger Doyle. He looked for. Dara Day, or Owen Daly inside but Owen doesn't get it over his head and then Conor Pyle is there to sweep it up sidesteps a couple of tackles there and it gets into a little bit of space he's carrying it forward he's looking around and seeing who's making the move and Killian Dyle is the man that shows in in front Dyle coming forward shortens the stick good work there by the defenders there and the, I think three times in the hand there was taken by Killian Dyle and great tracking back there by the Lachlan Gales defence and they're going to have to do a full hour of that Pat yeah it was amazing the, the run that Cormac Boyle, who's probably one of the elder statesmen on the Raharney team, he absolutely travelled down like a train down through the field, found Killian, and Killian just couldn't get the strike. Great credit to Collinstown for putting the defence back in place. So. Noel yeah. Connerty is out on the 20 metre line, ready to launch this free down, looking for that man, Owen Daly. But Owen Daly, his ball is knocked down, and David Williams gets it, and Dave. There's the back as far as Michal Daly. Michal Roy lifts it, spins away from a little bit of trouble, but then loses the ball. And the ball is picked up in there by Gary Gravel. Pass given out here to Joey Boyle. Joey has been involved in the early doors, comes forward and manages to lengthen the hurl and gets the strike in there despite John Egan's best attempts. But John did enough, just forced Joey that he couldn't settle on the strike and pulls it across the front of the post and wide. Yeah, it's a disappointing strike from Joey. He struck it well enough, but I mean, he put it over the full forward line. It's completely our play. Yeah, and goalkeeper Noel Connolly has gone the far side again. This time David Hickey sends in and wins it, and he fires it down looking for Kenny and Doyle. And Owen Heron is out in front here. Owen is picking over his shoulder there. The referee is playing an advantage. Yeah, he blows the whistle there. Foul there on the Raharney man there. And Owen Heron, Owen 
there are hardly men the Loch Gales defence Pat they'll know all about uh, Mona Heron from their last game so you know not allowing them to get the run up there but probably one for the team there take the foul and probably just concede the point from it yeah it was, the hurl was a bit high there but I know Noel Connery's outlet at the moment is going to be the jogger Doyle on one side and, and Owen Daly on the other and to have a height advantage if we're looking out here at this but jogger caught one great ball his pass went a little bit astray so yeah Killian Doyle is ready to take this free for his side he lifts it and he rifles it and rifles it between the uprights yeah. first point for Killian the number 11 there from Raharley makes no mistake there and P puck out again has been taken there by Noel Connolly does well to find Shane Williams in a little bit of space no. but again a little bit of nervous in Shane there and he's dispossessed and Kieran Dyle steps in Kieran fires this one across Owen Keys goes high grabs it first time and takes on his man steps around him and fires it over the bar lovely uh, a very good score from Raharley point of view but sloppy play from Collinson because they had the puck out Owen Shane Williams was in space, did yeah. hand an error there, the pressure came on, turned over. This time we're looking no. for Owen Daly. Daly grabs it well, but again, Rahardiman's trying to get in the road and not allow him to travel, but he does travel, and he fires it off the stick, but straight into the hands there of Aaron McHugh. McHugh goes out to the left, gets away from the danger, and Robbie Grebel is available, as is Darren Finn, and Finn moves it lower down the line, down in front of Killian Doyle, very close to the sideline. Doyle flicks the ball under his opponent's legs, and from the 45-metre line, he fires it in, umpires look up at it, but that time the red are not working for Killian that one across the front of the post and wide six minutes on the clock three for a Harney one for Lock Lane Gales now time Pat really for everyone to settle down and let's yeah. get into this game yeah Colin Sound outlet is still in the air Doyle and Daly Daly goes high with the ball broken away from him there and Michal Daly trying to get in on but Joey Boyle steps in and takes it from his side and he's carrying it forward here now flicks it in by Shane Williams he's on it again but then overruns the ball and Michal Daly oh a little bit blind pass there looking for Shane Williams and ball grabbed there and again it's the, it's the one thing that Lachlan Gales can't do Pat Raharney are going to punish them at every opportunity but they can't add to their own woes by making silly silly mistakes like that yeah like Joey Boyle seems to be on top of his man at the moment he's had to get in three or four possessions carrying the ball well but he just he was overdoing it Gales had it simple hand pass out went astray and then the foul was committed so it's realistically a simple score for Killian yeah he's had one so far just the clock ticks towards the seven minutes mark three to Raharney one for Loch Lane Gales and I would tighten but it's inside the post there I was going to say make that four but just nothing yeah. is the sure thing in Harlem but he just gets it inside the post four points now for a Harney Loch Lane Gales that solitary point come from David Williams and Noel Connolly has certainly been the busier of the two goalkeepers again looking for jogger. jogger who had come into the centre there ball broken down John, John Egan does very well to win it, but again can't get away from his opponent the ball flick forward and Eamon Cunyan is on it Cunyan first time off his right hand he looks at it and he sees that that one is going to drop over the bar lovely score there from the number 8 Pat again he's a quality young hurler yeah, for a Harney but very very good clever play by Joey Boyle he went to pick the ball but a quick hand pass off the hurley without touching it and he put young Cunningham in position yeah, puck out again from Noel Connolly. Jogger goes high, knocks it down. Who's on the breaking ball? He's trying to get it into the hand himself. There's a bit of a rock over there. Who has it now? Eventually breaking out. David Williams has it. But again, Rahari closing him down, forcing him back to Shane Williams. And Shane gets the strike in. He's leaning as this ball comes in. The umpires are looking at it. It's off the upright. And who's the first to react? Only Jamie Mulcairn. He's the full back. He watched that all the way. Moves it out to Robbie Gravel. They go central. And back then with Mulcairn again. And this time it's moved on here to Conor McHugh. He gets his first touch, does the number two. He's coming down the line. Hand pass it on here to Joy Boyle, who's out in front of John Egan. John does well to prevent the hand pass and find his original target. And then good hook there by Michal Daly on Killian Doyle. Brendan Doyle trying to get in close to him as well. Doyle brings Killian, brings it forward, and then Brendan Doyle eventually kicks it on. Shane Williams needs to settle into the game, gets this one up into his hand, comes out of a rock of players gets the strike on short grip on the stick is it going to beat everyone it is indeed nothing the full forward can do with that one there as it goes in over his head but again Pat no qu quality of ball at all going into that full forward no, like no, Derek McNichol is yet to get on the yeah. game at all but Raharney looked the more settled team at the moment yeah and the puck out is hit down here straight on to Rory Keyes who lays it off to Joy Boyle Joy he looks at this one as it drops in very very close to the end line to the square and this time good play there by the 
the fence there, the shepherd that went out over the end line. But again, they need to get more quality ball in. Shots yeah, kicking off, dropping into the goal. It's yeah. not what they need to do. No, Shane Williams is just hitting long deliveries, but there's no purpose to them. This time the puck out, he's looking for Owen Daly. Owen gets a hand on him, but doesn't win the possession. Eventually breaks, and Robbie Gravel kicks it over into space, and Michal Daly is onto it along with Tommy Doyle. Tommy, first real chance to get the strike out of his hand, and he fires yeah. it in, and that's over the bar. And that's a, a good and score for Lockdown, and certainly one that Tommy Doyle needed. Yes, definitely. Collinstown and Tommy Doyle needed that score, but a little bit of physicality from Tommy. He just out muscled Kieran Doyle, picked up the ball, central position, and a great score. Yeah, Aaron McHugh goes along with the puck out right down the centre, dropping into the D, flicked on. Killian Doyle is on the breaking ball. Dara Quimmer trying to get to him, gets a stick on it, forces him away, and then a little, little bit of a pull there on by the centre half back on his opponent there. Mickey Dan said it on the stick. Pat O'Brien not altogether sure about it. Maybe a little bit on the soft side, but it is going to be a free, a free for Killian Doyle as he walks out towards the 20 metre line. It's really a nightmare's annoyance because Killian was heading for the corner flag and the centre half back had him guarded and there was no need to swing, you know. He still had to win possession. But maybe a little bit softish in my book, but look at the free is a free. Yeah, and Killian Doyle, he won't mind, he stands over this one here. He'll line up on it, five points of two and Killian keeps this one low and drives it over the bar. Third free for Killian, six to two in favour of Raharney as we hit just the 11 minutes on the clock. Noel Connolly will see what option will he go with this time. This time he tries a lower trajectory, but he's looking for the centre half forward. And Robbie Grable going high there for that one, but referee deems that he pushed his man in the back there as it was coming down there. The foul on the, the, the first free, the first scoreable free now for Collins Sound, but. Robbie Greville really leaped a high to collect that ball and in momentum he actually knocked down David Williams so I yeah. suppose look at it. it balanced out the last two frees have kind of balanced one another out yeah David Williams now I think it might have been Philly Riley the man that was fouled he's out there wearing the number two out in the centre he's following Kieran Dyle out but David Williams now is on this free and he fires an in and he makes no mistake and fires it over the bar it's one from play and one from a free from the number 11 Again, he's a young player, Pat. There's a lot of expectation on him as well, the number 11, David Williams, for Lockdown Gales. Puck out is down here looking for Owen Keyes. Owen Keyes flicks the ball, and Tommy Owen Daly, it is, steps in. Owen tries to swing, a short swing on it, but he's blocked down, and Dara Quermer is there to pick it up. Quermer looks in. This time he fires a lovely low ball in, but Jamie McCarns reads it, comes out in front of his man. His man there was Jason Malone, and lives him on to Cormac Byland. The ball delivered right down in towards the corner, where Owen Hearn is here. Takes a nice shoulder there from Daniel Riley, and Daniel shrugs him off the ball, then and comes out, clears the ball, hangs a little bit in the air as Tommy Doyle was trying to get on it. The Harney men are straight away around it. Eamon Cunney lays it off now to David Hickey. Hickey is a wing half back. I mean, he'll attack at every opportunity. Fancy that one himself there. He, a man that nearly always adds a point or two for his side. This time not on target. Noel Connolly trying to get the puck out quickly, trying to find Owen Daly. But this time Gary Gravel steps in. He wins it. Ball is down the centre. Not the best shot in the world there but Shane Williams again Shane is having trouble getting the ball into his hand he's on the ground ball to Raharneyman two locked in gamesmen fighting for him. the ball eventually comes out to John Egan and John turns spins fires it down the line ball knocked down again here by the Raharneyman that's Conor McHugh and Owen Daly steps in and wins possession for his side trying to get away from him he's a nice little flick pass on here now the first time we see Derek McNicholas turn with the snap shot takes the shot the score Derek McNicholas, now Pat, we're almost t over 13 and a half minutes in, or 13 minutes into the game, and certainly Derek's first input, and yep. a great one it was. Super score, never looked, just instinct, instinct, and put it straight over the spot. Yeah, Raharney responded here with a puck out, grabbed over there on the far side there by Rory Keyes, but unfortunately for Rory, doesn't get it on target. Six to four, the game's right back in it, Pat. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, Raharney dominating the game, but Collins will be happy enough, only two points down, Raharney have hit five wides. 
Silly, silly wide somewhere. Great yeah. catch in front of the jogger. And the jogger now is coming centre. Can he go for the score? No, he drives it in low. Dangerous ball in front of Aaron McHugh. McHugh does well and deals very, very well with it. That was a dangerous ball right at his feet. Comes out, gives it to Robbie Gravel. A long relief and clearance as a Raharney man goes to ground. But nothing wrong with it as Killian Doyle brings the ball down. High tackle on him as he came across. Doesn't mind. He'll take the shot on. Fires it over the bar. Good advantage by the referee there. And again Pat maybe an opportunity for Tommy Doyle to stick that one over the bar yeah absolutely I mean they have won the aerial battle Owen Daly and Tommy Doyle from the puck outs but they're just not executing the scores yeah the puck out is coming down this side of the field and Joy Boy good man in the air wins this one again and Paul coming forward again Brendan Doyle with a shoulder tackle on Gary Gravel didn't think there was much wrong with that either but referee says it wasn't in the shoulder to shoulder and a, f a free awarded and Killian Doyle will walk out again and you know that's one thing about a Harney Pat you know you're within two points and next thing a minute later yeah. you're back out to four points again like, like I mean we're looking at this if this goes over it's the fourth scoreable free like for Killian like you know I mean yeah, and, and neither me or you are referees Ray but uh, some of these frees it's, they're debatable but look at Mickey Dan is experienced we have to go by him yeah Killian the point from that he scored from play a couple of minutes ago was also a foul so if he didn't get the, the point from play he was going to get it from the free anyway and he stands over this and he's just inside he locked and gets 65 as he fires it in and umpire this time I think is going to signal that Killian's red are not just working on that one let off no. there certainly for the Gales it, did, it probably didn't help that the young paternity from Collinstown was giving him plenty of jip and he's striking the ball but anyway he should be experienced enough to not listen to that yeah, the puck out again from Connolly. Again, Tommy Doyle goes high, brings it to ground, but on the breaking ball again is Eamon Cunyon, and Cunyon lays it off to Robbie Gravel. Robbie, Robbie looks up, cross-field ball, beautifully gathered there by Killian Doyle, and with Dara Quamer about five or six yards off. This time, oh, Doyle is fired in again, and it's not something we say too often about Killian Doyle. Two wides in a row for the number 11. It's this seven, seven wides for Raharney at the moment, but they're totally dominating the game. Colin Sound will just have to hang in, but this radar will start tuning in shortly for Raharney, I would expect. Yeah, they're looking for Tommy Doyle again on the puck out. Tommy goes high in the ball, breaks. John Egan wins the 50-50 ball as the ball moves inside here. Picked up there by Marcus Kennedy. Marcus, lovely play. Gives it inside to David Williams. Lovely stick work from Williams as he comes forward. He knew he was about to be hooked. And as he tried to pick up the ball, it was flicked away from him. And Raharney are back there in numbers. Conor McHugh comes out, delivers it long down the field. Dara Quimmer steps in in front of Killian Doyle and Shane Williams sweeping across from the right half back position, being held back as he's trying to get out. And then his attempted hand pass almost intercepted. But Dara Quimmer is there, needs to be a little bit smarter and quicker, and he does get the clearance away. Ball looking for Owen Daly. Daly goes high but doesn't win the ball. Carmel Poyle is in there, as is Robbie Gravel. Raharney seemed to be winning a lot of the breaks, and Eamon Cunyon comes away with another one. But again, Tommy Doyle closes him down. And the ball kicked forward, and Derek McNichols is out there again, has the possession. Derek is going to strike it over his shoulder. The Gales keeping one man inside here, and surely are we going to have a penalty, Pat O'Brien? Yes. Yes, we are indeed. Yes, yes. There was a ball, Derek McNichols struck it over his shoulder. We see it there as it was kicked forward, and Derek got it. He was forced to come back, didn't get a great connection on it, but in fairness to Lachlan Gales, they've kept one man in there the whole time, and he dragged to the ground there. I think Jason Malone was dragged, and what an opportunity here now for the Gales to get themselves right back into this game. David Williams, is it he? Yes, I think he's assuming yes. the responsibility for it I thought Derek might take it Pat but no, I, I mean he's known for taking the penalties but uh, it is a, an opportunist strike from Derek that was dropping short and a one in one situation that young Malone was being held back and obvious penalty no complaints from Raharney whatsoever you know it needs to be scored because the Gales are hanging on here and if Raharney you know don't get the radar focus fairly shortly the Gales could be a, get a we Williams are. comes forward, strikes and Lawless in the bottom of the net. Great strike. The Pat just be, uh, that's the tonic that they needed. But I was just going to say the advantage of holding a man in there on the square at all times yeah. for uh, exactly something like that. A ball miss hit, drops in front, and you have someone there to put pressure on. It's a great score. The penalty had to be scored, and Williams fires it all into the back of the net. But Harney are on the break from the puck out. Joy Boy in a little bit of space again, and that's all too easy. Is Boyle on the break and ball flicks it up and fires it over the bar, and he's 
You know, yeah. Joey Boyle seems to have the ma the, the beating of John Egan here. He's 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 after getting at least six plays at the moment. He's brought play, players into play, and that was a good a good point, a good reply now for Harney. Yeah, an opportunity for Joey. Well taken. Eight points now to one four for Lockdown Gales. Nineteen minutes into the first half, as Noel Conti looks for Tommy Dial over there on the far side of the field. Dial more used to seeing him on the other end of the field, but he's a player that gets the ball into his hand. What a score from Tommy Dyle. As I said, Pat, we're more used to see him down at the other end of the yeah. field with and so he's come back from the States, he used him as a wing forward, and that's a great score. Yeah, no, it's, it's, very, it's entertaining now, 20 minutes gone, level pegging. Yeah, back from Dyle, Tommy's brother wins the puck out, fires it on to Owen Daly, Owen settling into the game here, takes the ball to hand, coming forward, Connor Pyle trying to close him down, Daly gets the shot in, oh, it's off the upright. It was a close one. Daly did very, very well there. But again, Pat, I think the Galesman just settling down that little bit better. There was yeah. a ball paid to one Daly. Maybe 10 minutes ago, he might have controlled it as well as he did. But just settling in, I getting in now at this stage. Yeah, no, Gales are, w are well in this game now, without having been played that terrible well. Hit against Daly. Boy, Joy Boy. Ball picks it out of the sky again, going forward. Again, carries it in, but the Galesman get the bodies in around it, and they have it. And Michal Daly hooked as he was trying to get away with it there on the Heron. Again, trying to pick his pocket, the Heron. But again, good work there by Dara Quamer because he stepped in and won that ball away, and he's fired it off his right hand out into the centre. Tommy Dyle is trying to get to it, and he does well to get a little flick on it. Gary Greville comes in there. Rahari have the numbers around. Eamon Cunyon has it. Cunyon trying to step away from the, uh, uh, David Williams. Williams does very well. Goes to ground. Surely a push the back, no to the referee, and then eventually the foul committed there, high tackle there, the referee signaled across the face guard, I think it was, I think it was David Williams, the man that went to ground there, but again, that will give the, the Gales defence all the more confidence, Pat. Yeah, the Gales are growing in confidence, that goal is a huge tonic, you know, they're, they're definitely growing in confidence now, Joy Boy caught another great ball, was gone through, but he was swarmed immediately, couldn't get the strike off, the Gales won it back, they got a free here, and I don't know, is David Williams going to come? I don't know, is he coming out to hit this? Not sure. He is, he is actually. It's, it's it's David is the man that was fouled. I think he's going to leave it here for, no, it, for, for his cousin Shane, I think, to take this one. And certainly he's a good striker, the ball as well. As he's here halfway, probably between 45 and he's on 65 here now, as Williams has a look at it. and lifts it and he strikes and he rifles it in it's dropping in he's looking for Derek McNicholas Mc Jamie McCarron's come out got a hand to it but didn't hold it and then as Hardyman comes across the front of the goals with the ball in his hand a little flick across the hand there and goes to ground there and a free out and a free out for the Hardyman there but yeah, Paul, uh, Pat, nice game, settling in nicely, 22 minutes, sides level. Yeah, from a neutral's point of view, it's, it's, it's exciting. It's, the Gales have settled into the game now. But Raharnis will be very annoyed to have, I think it's seven wides, and, there, and six of them are from play, you know. So, I mean, they had been running the show for the first 15 minutes, but you must put the ball over the bar to get the score on the board. And it's yeah. all about what's on the board at the finish of this the game. So, yeah, John Sound not playing that terrible well, but they're growing into the game. Yeah, we see Joy Williams and Brendan Williams down here below us, and they'll be quite happy how things have gone. But this free is gathered here by Owen Keys. He dummies, and he has the confidence to have the shot. But that one just across in front of the post there as well. It was a, a Low percentage shot there from the corner forward there, right very close to the sideline, couldn't get it on target, and the ball has gone out over the end line again. And Noel Connerty, Noel, such experience, inter county goalkeeper, fires it over the far side. Tommy Dyle goes high, the ball is batted away, but Dyle is after it again. Gary Greville is right on top, and Greville has it, wins it, and lays it back to David Hickey, who strokes the ball inside here, looking for the full forward, or looking for Killian Dyle. Killian immediately closed down there. Dara Quamer picks it up and gets the call from his goalkeeper, and he lays it back to him. And Noel then drives it long. Owen Daly is the target. Daly gets a hand on it, breaking down, and David Williams on the ground first time Darryl Daly trying to get on the ball is under his hurl I think it was under a Harney Pants hurl and Derek might think is out here Derek takes a tackle into the chest there goes to the ground there and I think the referee right on top of things there was a frontal charge and Derek McNicholas he tried to get the ball into his hand he didn't but a hardy man followed on into and uh, we could have an opportunity here now for the Gales to go ahead. A needless needless free from Raharney point of view because they were actually in possession coming out with the ball and a frontal charge on Derek. So it's given a great opportunity now for David to put them in the lead. 
Yeah, this free is just inside the Raharney 45 metre line. It's about seven or eight metres in from the stand side here in TG Cusick Park. The clock will hit the 24th minute as Damon is about to take this free. He goes through his routine. He comes forward, he lifts it, and he oh. fires it, but I think that one has just gone across the front of the post and wide. It, again, we've seen that a couple of times with balls just curving across in front of the post. And it's a point that got away from him. Definitely, you would expect David to get that score. Yeah. Look at if, if Killian Doyle missed one of one, then Williams misses one the other, and oh, from the puck out, Eamon Cunyon has won it inside. Looks up, gives it into Dial Dial, lovely skill, and the ball. And it's not in the net. It's not in the net. I don't know who made the save, but come and cover him back in on the line. Dial thought he had it finished to the net, but he didn't, and the ball is fired in. This time has gone out over the end line of wide. There's three players on the ground in here. Pat will have a look at that one on the replay again. Post, to back off the post. The ball seems to come in. Killian Doyle flicked it Just over. Looking at it again, Cardi, the next time back off the post. The replay there. Back into Go ahead, the Pat. Defender. Came back off the post onto the Collins Sound defender and was cleared. Very unlucky for Raharney. <laughs> Huge luck for Collins Sound. Yeah. But a massive it, opportunity for Raharney wasted. Yeah, it was. Eamon Cunningham that got on to the breaking ball. He did everything right. He drew the defender, flipped it all over his head. Doyle took it in the air. Toddy had taken it round everyone and was about to flick it to the net, but somehow or other, one of the locked in Kills men got back, got something on it, kept it out of the back, and that's the most important thing from the follow on play. Ball fired in and fired wide. A couple of players down on the ground here now, but. Pat, that goal is living a charm life down there. Absolutely. Look, Colin Sound, maybe, maybe Lady Luck is with them today because they're riding a lot of storms here at the moment because Raharney look dangerous, but just not finding the radar. That's the ninth wide, I think, I have written down for Raharney at the moment. You know, and I mean, eight points and nine wides, they have a lot of domination. <laughs> yeah, we're just watching. I think the, the replay, we're going to have a look at that incident again while there's a Raharney player down injured, but. I can't. I, 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 I certainly would have put the mortgage on Killian Doyle finishing that one to the back of the net there. You can see it, Eamon Cunyon coming in there. Oh, we're, we're back on the way again as Tommy Doyle pulls one out of the sky here and has control and looks up and sees David Williams beside him in support. Pops the pass off and a great response there by the number 11, David Williams. And I don't know how that ball didn't end up in the back of the net. Yeah, well, sir, look at if Lady Luck is with you, that's why it doesn't go in, but who knows? It could yeah, come back could. to Rura, Harney. Yeah, and good response there now, and the ball fired over the bar by David Williams, second one from play as the puck out drops side. Joey Boyle goes to ground, flicks it with his, with his feet as he went tumbling in the air, and John Egan picks up the ball, gives it on to Dara, or to Owen Daly, and Owen Daly on to Brendan Dial. Dial down towards Marcus Kennedy, not really in the game yet, but David Williams, he has himself very, very close to the side, does well to keep it in play, but only manages to give the pass in to Joey Boyle. Joey turns, fires it inside, danger area, the ball broken down, Rahar trying to get it into a little bit of space Kelly and Doyle goes to ground there but good defending there by the, the Lachlan Gales defence there and it's back there and Michal Daly that was the full back Dan Higgins that did very well but coming forward here is Robbie Gravel Robbie takes the hit but gives the ball on to Joey Boyle Joey has a look at the post and his reaction straight away said that he knew that one was over the bar and Joey has been very influential for his side, his second point, and we're tied again at nine. One goal and six for the Gales, one nine points for Raharney, 27 and a half minutes on the clock. Yeah, Joey's very influential. He's done a lot of plays. Great strike from at least, what, 60, 70 yards. Very, very good score. Noel Connerty with the puck out again, fires it down into the half back, half forward line. Oh, great catch by Marcus Kennedy. And Marcus lays off a lovely pass to David Williams. David gets the shot in, but I yes. think oh. he was under pressure. Again, as that man, Joey Boyd, tracking back, tracked the whole way back into the corner back position there, put enough pressure on Williams to force the shot to go to the left and right. The puck out again. This time, Shane Williams attacks it, and he's coming forward. He's on the 45 for a hardy Fires it on the run. Oh, that's a great score there by the number seven. Pat, we know all about him. He's a talented hurler. Yeah. Hasn't really settled into this, but that might settle him down yeah, now. Superb score. He picked the ball on the run at pace. 
and Kem travelled 30 metres and struck it brilliantly over the bar. Yeah, hardly time to draw breath here as this puck out comes down, knocked away and onto the ground, up very close to the ground there from Owen Daly, but Joy Boyle, the other number 12, he'll come forward to it. Again, normally put the hit on him, Joy is very, very close to the sideline, gets one then, and as he hand passed the ball away, and Owen Daly tied up, manages to get a good hand pass off there to Philly Riley. Philly fires it in first time, but again, good defending back in there by the Raharney men, and Ro it's Robbie coming out again. Robbie grabbed advantage was being played, and the ball fired down here. But I think there was a foul committed on on Robbie Grebel as he came out here. I think it's Joey Boyle that's gone to ground here. He certainly shipped a heavy tackle there as he was getting the ball away very very close to the sideline. Get yeah, he one that Mickey Dan didn't get to see properly. I suppose he was just hand passing the ball away, and always there's a, a man coming in to tackle. But you could say it was a little bit over the top but Joey is on the ground yeah Joey Arnie could do with Joey now back on his feet because he's one of their kingpins at the moment yeah he's just complaining there too looking for a drink from the physio but I think he'll be good and ready to get back on the, has the hurl in his hand there is the number 12 again he's an experienced player not too happy maybe with the referee that he didn't get the foul but he'll go along and he'll get on into play and We'll get on the way again here with this free back down on our left hand side is Kieran Dyle. Hasn't been involved much in the play here, but this time fires it in. Again, great tracking back there by Tommy Jogger Dyle. But he can't get it into the hand of the first time, but he's controlled uh, in there and he just lays it off now to Dan Higgins and Dan first time down the line here. David Williams brings it down. Again, can't get it into the hand and Michal Daly is trying to help him there. Michal Daly has the ball for his side, gives it on to his younger brother. He steps into the tackle, been tied up here. Great work there by the Raharney man. Needs a bit of help to zone Daly. He gets it. Who flicks it out? Flicked out all the two men. For Jersey almost being pulled off one of the Lock Lane Gales men. There's a rook in here. Who can get possession? Eventually, the ball is picked up there. Lock Lane Gales man had the, had the ball, but the referee said held on to it too long and the free, and the free for the Raharney men. Yeah, it was uh, very difficult to call that one because it could have went either way. I was going to say, Pat, there was a lot happening there in that rope. Was but a lot. I, he just signalled a Raharney free. So he saw something we didn't see. Yeah, it's a free for Raharney and Killian has gone back to take this one. This one is back inside his own 60 metre long, maybe just a bit less from his own side. The lock lane gills. Supporters trying to jeer at him, but yeah. this time he's not affected by that. In this time he fires it over the bar. The fifth of the day, a four from freeze coming from the stick of the number 11, Killian Dyle, and we're tied again. Don't know what additional time was called there, but we're gone a minute and a half over the 30 minutes as Noel Connolly fires this one out here again, looking for Daly down this side of it. On Daly, he's a young man, he's a big, tall man. Right. John, John Egan there. Silly, silly free again, and it's more or less in the same position for Killian. Yeah, and he's walking back out to take this one again. I think this one maybe a little bit further in. A little bit further back, Pat, but he'll, he'll fancy it as well because he certainly had plenty to spare on the last one. Yeah, John Egan, maybe a little bit a little bit unfortunate. He stepped across Robbie Grebel as he lifted the ball to no one in particular and just, you know, body checked him as such. And, oh, Mickey Dan isn't right on top of things anyway. He was a free. And it's a, it'll be a monster free if he's to get this one because yeah. it is actually a long, long distance. Yeah, the breeze is probably whatever is in it here today is helping him here as we come down towards the half time whistle. That Killian lifts it and he fires. He got good connection on it. And the, the boys and the goals know that exactly that they can do nothing about it. That is a monster free, an absolute monster from there. And he had plenty to spare. So that's, that's two frees that Collins will might rule at the end of this game as we go into the break for half time. Yeah, we're at half time. That point from Killian Doyle is enough to put Raharley back into the lead. One, one goal and seven to Lachlan Gales, 11 for Raharley. And Pat, just looking back on a couple of those incidents from the first half, um, the goal from David Williams was a hugely important score because it brought the Gales back into it at a time when they were trailing by four and we thought maybe the game was going to just drift a little bit away from them but a foul in, 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 in there one and one and finished to the back in there but the Gales have grown into the game pattern and they're right in it as, and you said it a couple of times as neutrals and that's what we are we want to see a ding dong battle here and you know in fairness that's what we're getting so far yeah no it's, it's good entertainment I think everyone would be very pleased to be here today to watch it the, the Gales have grown as the game has gone on but 
D D Raharney have dominated in the half back line, especially on the puck outs. Some of the, the puck outs may be won by, say, Tommy Doyle and Owen Daly, but they're not getting the execution away. They're being swamped up and deliveries are going back the opposite way. But Raharney will be disappointed if nine wides, eight of them came from play. You know, they had a goal chance that somehow, by a miracle, it didn't go in. It came off the defender, onto the post, and came back to the goalkeeper. So, I mean, if you planned it or tried to do it, you couldn't do it. But Raharney have dominated the game, but Collins Home will go in very, very happy. They're only one point down. The penalty, obviously, was a huge fill-up altogether because... Once you get a, a three-pointer in, in a tight game, yeah, it, it, yeah. it's a huge momentum swing. Yeah, and that's exactly what we've had. You know, David Williams has been, has been good from play as well. Paddy maybe missed a couple of other opportunities, but a, a goal and three to his name. Shane Williams, lovely score there as well. You know, driving forward from the half-back line, but, you know, Joey Boyd is a problem for this Lockdown Gales event. Joey has been excellent. Yeah, Joey has been very, very consistent all along here. Like, but David Williams is 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 hurling well. But he was he'd be very disappointed with himself. He missed a scoreable free and a, and a, and a point from play on his favourite side. But like, it, look at who knows what pressure is being put on some of these guys on the ball. So it, it's it's in the melting pot. I was saying before the game started myself, if if Collins Town could go in within a shout. They'll be very happy. And, I mean, they're only one point down. So they're absolutely in, in a good position going into this game. Well, look, we look, we look forward to a good second half and a close second half. We're going to take a break here for an ad break from the commentary box. So we draw a breath here. We'll go to ads and we'll back me with the lads for some analysis on the field. But for now, uh, we'll, we'll take the ad break. TEG. Proud sponsors of TEG Cusick Park. Serving aviation, biopharmaceuticals and medical industries across the globe. TEG has been to the fore in the fight against COVID-19 with our customers and partners. A local business employing local people. Visit teg.com forward slash careers to learn more. Wishing all our GAA patrons a safe passage through the championship. Seven's Coasters, proud sponsor of Westmead GA Hurling Championships. MJ Stone Building and Developments, proud sponsor of Westmead GA. And you, what do you do? Mm, it's a bit complicated to explain. Hey, hey. You know, I still didn't get exactly what your job is. That's what I do. New Renault Arcana E-Tech Hybrid. Winner, Irish Medium Crossover SUV in the 2022 Car of the Year Awards. Presentation. And we're going to give them a big bowl of balls. Yeah, it's half time here in the Slevin's Coaches Senior Hurling Championship final. A point in at 1-7 to Loch Lane Gales. 11 points to Harney and Damien. We spoke earlier on about having a decent game we certainly got what we wished for because this is a cracker yeah fantastic final now it's said that nothing is more expensive than a missed opportunity yeah. and Raharney uh, will be the more concerned I would suggest of the two sides at half time they've poked uh, my, I had a, I had accounted eight wides Alan here tells me nine and Alan is ten, ten wides in that first half so they've taken 11 chances they missed a goal and left a goal behind them a miraculous save very dramatic by Daniel Riley just to scramble that ball off the post and then clear it off the goal line. So the Gales had a bit of a bit of good fortune then. But uh, from a from a Harney perspective, they came here in their last group match and they shot wide after wide. They had a huge wide count that day, and we questioned beforehand whether or not that long layoff might be a factor. I think the first half here has shown that they have an issue. They're missing chances, they're leaving opportunities behind them. If they continue to do that and leave the Gales in this match, well, it's going to come down to the last five or ten minutes. Yeah, and Alan, uh, one striking feature, and we've noticed it up there, Paul Donovan and myself, is Killian Doyle at full fitness. He looks to me to be carrying a bit of a leg, if I'm being quite honest with you, and, and it's something that has, uh, has been... Having said that, he stepped up to take the last two great frees for a Harney. But he, to me, he doesn't look 100%. I'm not, I'm not quite sure what you think of it, but 
it, it, to me it doesn't look at 100% and Raharney are going to need him no they're absolutely going to need him listen he might be carrying a bit of a knock but listen it's county final this is the last hurrah for, for both yeah. teams and even if you're carrying a bit of a knock you'll get through it at the end of the day but it is a very worrying factor for Raharney I have it down as 10 weights uh, Lachlan Gales have only got 4 uh, 10 weights where probably 5 or 6 of those shots were they weren't none they were from the sideline from up around here and there was plenty of room in front and Owen Keyes is, is a player and Owen Ahern two players that can cause major damage and they haven't really fed them too much I think Owen Keyes got one ball in he caught a great catch turn over the bar but I don't think Owen Ahern has got a decent ball poked into him the whole half either yeah and, and speaking of that much vaunted Raharney forward line you take Killian Doyle's points out of it Paul Joey Boyle is the only player that has shone there at all and he, he is getting a better or did get the better of his man early on in the game but the Gales have settled down a little bit. Once they got the grips with that Joey Boyle attack, they have ploughed onto it. David Williams seems to be travelling. Shane Williams at wing back has been a revelation. The jogger, we wonder where he was going to go. He was put out in the half forward line for a reason, and that's to get under Noel Connolly's puckouts. And it has certainly worked for him. And his distribution of the ball has been excellent. So we asked, could the Gales stay in it up until half time? And they certainly have. And probably, probably a little bit unlucky to be going in a point behind. Yeah, yeah, there was a couple of, like, um, Young Williams put a free wide, he'd probably be expecting to put over another shot shot at, that just drifted wide as well from that point of view. No, look, Gales have been full value for their performance, you know. Like, Raharney are creating all the opportunities, but the opportunities they're creating and shooting from, they're tough ones. They're under pressure, out in the wings, striking on the back foot, and they're going wide for them, which is exactly the same as the Clonkill game, which is the last game you were talking about, Damien, where they did in the first half, playing the same direction, did exactly the same thing, shot after shot after shot, and kind of just, like, I, I would say the game needs a bit of a spark. It does feel, it's, it's a good game, it's close, there's a lot of good hurling in it, but it, I, I, I'm still waiting for it to explode into life. You know, there's just... There's been little, apart from the penalty, that was great bit of excitement to it. And, and look at, we watched it back on tape. There's no question in my mind yeah. it was a penalty. Yeah. You know, you, you can argue with the referee all you want, Alan. I, I, I have no doubt in my mind it was a penalty. He had his arms around him. It's what the referee is seeing, and it looked a penalty to me. Absolutely, and at the end of the day, he's given a penalty, and that's just it. That's and it's not going to make any difference what we think of it. Yeah. But there's no doubt that Lachlan Gales would be the happier of both teams going in at half time. But at the same time, I'd still say they're a little bit disappointed. There's an awful lot more, an awful lot more in them. I'd say they're a little bit disappointed with the way they're playing, and uh, and I'd say Raharney are definitely disappointed in the way they're that they're, uh, they're creating chances but they're not putting them away and they're probably taking shots from silly positions uh, there's no doubt Lachlan Gales would be definitely be the happier of both sides but I know we're saying that I, I don't think it's as good an encounter as you're after saying it is I think a lot a lot of poor decisions have been made by both sides and at the same time it's close and that's what we wanted at half time yeah and, and we did say at the start of the broadcast I mean if we, we thought if it was tight it would suit the Gales it has been that they're very much in with a chance here in my opinion and, and I think you know they, they might be happy enough to be only going in one point behind but at the same time I think they've left a little bit behind them as well the forward line really hasn't clicked at all yet and yet they're still only a point behind yeah look I suppose in terms of quality and real quality we've had a bit of a mixed bag uh, we had a couple of fantastic scores. I mean, Derek McNicholas, yeah. the quick flick, the quick use of the wrists just to shoot that point over the bar from play. Then we had Killian Doyle with that massive free from about, well, well over 90 metres perhaps. Yeah. But Killian Doyle is not operating, he's not functioning from play. Raharney are hoping, they're hoping rather than feeling confident that Killian Doyle can do the business here. They're just hoping that they get the chances and that Killian will puck over the freeze that's going to get them over the line. Uh, I'd be more concerned if I was in the Raharney camp at this stage. Um, apart from Joey Boyle, nobody is really standing out from play. I agree with you. Whereas on the Lachlan Gale side, Owen Daly's playing very well. The jogger is having a, ma a major influence. And David Williams has had a great first half. So, but, but Paul spoke about it beforehand. The goals, the goal chances are going to be crucial. Yeah. Will the Gales get another goal chance? If they do, they need to take it. They can't afford to miss. Yeah, look, at it, it, it's all to play for, Paul, and it, it's yeah. really in the melting pot, you know. I think, like, Damien made a really good point. Like, I was just looking at the, you know, like, we did talk about, like, all the potential that's in that Raharney forward line. But, like, much truth of be told, Joy Boyle has had an impact on the game. Maybe his shooting's been a bit awry. Owen Hearn, Kieran Doyle, Owen Keyes. 
minimal impact on the game. Some of it because they haven't been fed. Rory Keyes, I don't think I've seen him no. push the ball from that point no. of view. Now, I would say the two gravels have been outstanding yeah. and a platform for Harney. Anything they've got out of it, like they've been winning every dirty ball in the middle third yeah. and creating you know any opportunities that are Harney are getting. Even e they just need to bring more players into it. E even though D David Williams is playing really, really well, Robbie Gravel is also playing really, yeah. really yeah, well. Yeah, it's for kind of and, and, and the Gales are going to have yeah. to the Gales are going to have to cut down on him coming out so easily. Listen, we're going to go straight back up to Ray on the break here, but it's back up to Ray in the commentary box for the second half. All to play for here in the Westmead Senior Hurling Final. TEG, proud sponsors of TEG Cusick Park. Serving aviation, biopharmaceuticals and medical industries across the globe. TEG has been to the fore in the fight against COVID-19 with our customers and partners. A local business employing local people. Visit teg.com forward slash careers to learn more. Wishing all our GAA patrons a safe passage through the championship. Seven's Coaches, proud sponsor of West Mead GAA. Done. Back, back here for the start of the second half. I think we have a, a substitution. I think, I think it is is for Raharney men. Number 19 is Brian McGrath. You said. So we just watch it as the ball is thrown in because Raharney almost first to get on possession there, but this time, ball is knocked down. Brendan Daly, uh, Brendan Dyle is trying to get enjoy. Williams does very well to flick it over, but he put his teammate under a bit of pressure there, and Kraharney have the possession again, back with Cormac Boyle, quick strike, drives it in, ball is knocked down inside there, Daniel Riley, oh, Daniel, oh, almost robbed there by the man who's just been introduced inside there, that's the sub number 17, Devon Hill, but Lachlan Gales do well, and the ball is knocked down here, and Dar da or Owen Daly is on the breaking ball, and Owen Daly we have the first score of the second half, that's a great score from... The number 12 there, Pat. Just a couple of subs coming in, both for a Harney, I think. Um, yeah. Devon Hill and... Devon Hill, a little unlucky, got away. He slipped just after he winning the ball, but great score from Daly. That's just exactly what Collins don't need. Yeah, Devon Hill and Brian McGrath, I think it is Brian McGrath, have been introduced there for the... Raharney Mendel, ball is very, very close to the side and over there on the far side and the Galesmen come forward. Not the best pass in the world, but Michal Daly did well to make something over and manages to swing the stick, get it on in towards Derek. Derek McNicholas goes to ground. Looked like he was pushed, but he dispossessed. And then mm. the Derek, I think, from the ground, he just fouled Jamie Mulcairns as he was about to get away with the ball and the free out. And Tied again at 11, 11 to 1 8 as Robbie Grebel takes the free quickly, goes down the line, down the far side. Owen Keyes is out in front of his man. One point in the first half, he's round his man, he shortens the stick, fires it in, but Noel Connolly is quite comfortable that one is going to go across the front of his post and it's gone out over the end line and wide. Hook out, fire down this side of the field. Tommy Dial going for the ball there and it was David Hickey, I think. I don't know whether it was an intentional foul, but certainly it seemed to turn around. Of Dyle went to the ground there, and there's an opportunity here now for David Williams to take this free to get his side back into the lead. Free here just inside the Raharney 45. Yeah, like there's a good height distance in the jogger and David David Hickey, like so. It's a good outlet for Colin Sound putting it down on top of the jogger, especially if he's one and one. Yeah, and so this it's time an opportunity now for David Williams to put them back in front. Yeah, and the breeze, I think, Pat, maybe a little, seemed to get a little bit more length on, on Noel County's puck out that time, dropping it down inside the 45. Yeah. Williams lifts it, and this time, Perfect. sweet as a nut, fires it over the bar. Lovely score there from the number 11, and that'll get him fired for the start of the second half as well. Yeah, good score now. That's exactly what Collins needed. Just keep that little bit in front, 1 9 to 11. Yeah, looking for Joy Boyle over on the far side again. Joy gets a hand on it and he's on the breaking ball. Nice, cool play there. Comes inside and then the ball fired inside where one Keith has gone right into the full forward position. Devon Hill is there as well. Lachlan Galesman goes to ground, but it's very well there to Daniel Riley. On to me, Holiday and Daly immediately fires a long ball down. Gathered here by Marcus Kennedy. Kennedy goes to ground. Frontal charge there by Jamie Mulcairns. I think it was. The Harry defence are not too happy about it, but Mickey Dan right on top of things. Mulcairns is pleading his innocence but it's not going to work because referee 
are not for changing minds and another opportunity here now for David Williams yeah, well, if we could just backtrack for a second, I mean, it was a great ball into own keys. His first touch seemed to be good, but a little nudge and he loses his possession. Ball clear down and a huge catch by Marcus Kennedy under pressure. Wins the free and, well, it looks like a scorable free for David. Yeah, David Williams ready to take this one. He's just about 22, 23 metres maybe out from the goals. He comes forward, he lifts it and he strikes it. Oh! oh. Across the front of the goals, Pat, it seemed to just maybe f try to fire it too hard as such, but anyway, yeah, well, it's an opportunity to miss. Hardy missed him in the first half. The Gales missed him in the second half. The puck out, gone down this side of the field. No one able to get clean possession. Shane Williams does eventually, goes down, goes low. Killian Doyle stops him from moving out the field, and then he turns and fires a long ball, looking for Jason Malone, and coming on to the breaking ball is Owen Daly, and Owen Daly has started the second half like someone lit a fire under him inside the dressing room, Pat, and that's two great scores from the number two. Two great scores from Owen Daly, but I'd be a little bit concerned about Killian Doyle. He doesn't seem to be moving very fluently at the moment. Like, that last possession was there for him, and he wasn't able to just go in and collect it so great fill up there now for Colin Sound yeah the puck out again from Aaron McHugh he's going along again his main target throughout this game has been Joey Boyle this time the ball is broken from Joey and is picked up by Owen Daly Daly has a look at the post he's going to back himself the two umpires are looking up at it yes and it's over the bat again oh we had a long wait there as the umpire came round for it but Joey Boyle has been a target Joey didn't get a he got a hand him a cut and hold it and now Oh, Five minutes into the second half, and the Gales are three points to the good. 1 11 to Raharney's 11 points. There's a puck out again that's gone that far side the field. Ball broken down. Shane Williams, Michal Daly trying to get it into his hand. He has plenty of support over there, but who can get clean possession? It's that man, Owen Daly again. Daly does well to leave it back to John Egan, who John fires it down first time. Out on there was Derek McNichols, but Derek broke the ball down and Robbie Grebel just picks up the breaking ball and gives it on here now towards Devon Hill. Devon with Daniel Riley right on top of Riley does very well, flicks it on one hand and looking for the Tommy Doyle doesn't get it because David Hickey does very well to step inside. David bottled there as he was trying to get the hand pass away there and fouled eventually there by Daniel Riley and free again is again a silly, silly free pass because the Gales looked yeah. they were in control of matters there. The Gales seem to get bodies back around the ball and Raharney just I suppose got a free there where it was a little bit off the ball there was no need to give away that free but the Gales are, have their dander up now and they're playing very very well they are indeed just need to keep their discipline because Killian Doyle I would imagine will nail every chance he gets yeah Killian is about to take this one five from freeze one from play in that open half this one well within his range and absolutely over the black spot fires it over the bar Nice score there, just keeps them nicely within touch. We're nicely set up here, Pat, yeah. two between them. Yeah, no, it's, it's further neutral. It's, it's a ding-dong, perfect, perfect position after for six minutes. Noel Connolly goes long with the puck. Great on Breaks nicely for David Williams. David from the 45. Oh. Oh. David Williams has had opportunities, Pat, and he's missed, and they'll be hoping yes. they don't live to regret it. And he's both the hero and the villain at the moment. Yeah, the quick puck out down the far side of the field there. Joey Boyle has gone in in front of the goals and win that, won that ball for a split second. But again, the defenders are getting back there and the ball moved on. Michal Daly half blocked down as he gets the strike away and Robbie Grebel, the ball just kind of stopped in front of him there, just made it a little bit more difficult. But from the 65, he fires it in. Big ball shot in. Noel Connolly looking at it. The signals it's over the bar. So Pat again, a miss at one end and a response there from the Gales when we're back to a one-point game again. Great leadership there from Robbie. He just says, stand back, let me have it. And he drove it 90 yards over the black spot. Yeah, great score there. Puck out is coming down this side of the field. Jason Malone goes high, ball is broken down. Pulled on first time by Philly Riley into towards Owen Daly. Owen Daly does very well to get the ball in his hand. Needs a little bit of support here because there's blue jerseys everywhere around him. Trying to give it back to oh, Tommy yeah. Doyle, who did very well to get a little flick on it. And David Williams, great skill to get it up in the air. But ball broken away from him. And Michal Daly has been closed down. Turns, has to be quick to get the strike in. Fires it in yes. and fires it over the bar. Ah, the scores are coming thick and fast, Pat. One better than the other. Yeah, absolutely. Terrific scores. Terrific scores from play, especially the dailies. That was a super score. But a brilliant pick up by David Williams before that and a great flick away from Rarney. 
Yeah, the ball is quick then. It's no. that man, Brian McGrath, Brian McGrath, comes out. He's a big man. He can do well in the air. And he's coming forward here now. Need to get to him. What's he going to do? He's going to hold on. Pull to the ground. Referee. Penalty. Penalty. Oh. Pat, we, we can have a look at it on the replay here. But you spoke about Brian McGrath. He's a great man to win ball in the air. I think in one of the games earlier in the championship it was a battle of the two number 13s he's wearing the number 19 today he was introduced as a sub at half time and it all opened up in front of him there as he carried that ball right in and pulled yeah. to the ground there and a super catch by Brian McGrath about what's 50 60 meters out and he opened up the defense of the Lachlan Gales went straight through down the center just got to the edge of the parallelogram put the brakes on went to on to his right hand side and he was pulled back needlessly needlessly there was two defenders on him and he gives an opportunity to Killian Doyle now that would yeah, to, to, to county could be the changing of this game, to to on whether to it goes in or not. Two county colleagues facing each other here. Killian lifts, Killian strikes, and, and all party has saved it. I was just going to say these boys would be well used to playing them facing each other probably in penalties in training with the county team. And Connerty showed all his experience and got down low and got it out for a 65. Again, not maybe struck with the, the best power in the world, but... It was fi fired in and Killian would have, we would certainly would have fancied him with that one, but the experienced Noel Connerty right back in there and fires it over the bar for it, or fired it out, got it out for the 65 for his side here, and we're, we're back out with Killian. Again, he's had a mixed day. Yeah, Killian would be very disappointed with that, but the character of the man now will be tested whether he can put the 65 over the bar now or not. Yeah, comes out. Fires and it in, it. and yeah, lovely score there. So, substitute coming in here again for Lachlan Gales, number nine, 19 is Aaron Kennedy. He's coming in to replace of Jason Malone. Aaron Kennedy. Yeah, Jason Malone was fouled for the penalty in the first half, remember, as he makes his way off, so... We're back on the way again as Noel Connery this time sees that Tommy Jogger Dial is down this side of the field. Jogger goes high, the ball goes off his hand, broken inside, and a chance for Aaron Kenny to get on his first ball, but doesn't get the connection, and then the ball is kicked out over the sideline. Darren Finn there as he was coming away with the ball under a little bit of pressure, kicked it, wanted to just kick it out in front of himself, but it ended up out over the sideline. A line ball, and David Williams fancies this one as well, even though he's looking up to see what's on. Goes short. Behold Daly makes himself available. Daly takes in his hand, gets the strike in, but groans in the crowd there as that one goes across in front of the post. And wide ball there from Mihal Daly and Harry trying to just get out into position here and the ball is fired out there. Over looking for David Hickey. Can Hickey keep it in play? No, he can't. It's gone no out over the sideline. Like the likes of David Hickey has been quiet now today. A, a guy who's always on the ball, good for a score or two in every game. But his hands yeah. are full with Owen Daly. Yeah, ab absolutely. Harry has sw sw or Daly has switched from Tommy Doyle over to the other side, but he, he, he went from one giant to another over there, Pat, and absolutely. he has he has Daly now. But this time, it's the older of the Daly brothers. That's me, Hall. He cuts this one in. Again, in towards the centre. Hardyman do well just to get that ball away and Robbie Gravel is on to a breaking ball here and he's carrying it forward again lots of men around him but he'll back himself he takes a shot the umpire though has a look off on him that was an opportunity missed there still the one between them 112 for Lachlan Gales 14 for Harney just over 12 minutes on the clock as Noel County fires it again looking for Tommy Jogger Doyle and Doyle allows the ball to go to ground there Shane Williams had gone forward Shane is very very close to the ground He's gone out over the line. No, sh I thought the ball wasn't going over the line, Pat. I don't know what you thought there, but the line's yeah, back. It's Barry Kelly. I would have thought that David actually touched the ball on the ground when he slipped. But anyway, it's a line ball. And well, Shane Williams, he knew there was a little opportunity there. He's line man and Barry Kelly, so we won't, definitely won't dispute that one. Yeah, Shane Williams there did very well to anticipate that. The line ball is taken poorly, and the jogger Dial has it. Surely been fouled. Referee doesn't see it that way. And Dial, great vision across. Looking for Owen Daly. Daly trying to be tied up by Cormac Boyle. Gets the strike in, and the referee was playing an advantage. I was wondering, was he? Because Daly certainly looked to me like he was being fouled. Mickey Dan from the edge of the D stands in there and says, an opportunity for David Williams here to go back two up. 
It was a great ball in from the jogger. Perfect pass to, to Owen Daly. Had, had. David Williams has a great chance here now. This is very, very central. He's just inside the D. Again, none of these are given, but let's just take his time as he fires it in and fires it over the bar. And another one from the stick of David Williams. That's one goal and five now for Williams. And Amai Racton as Aaron McHugh is ready again and gets us underway. This time, Brian McGrath is under. McGrath goes high, wing ball hops off the top of his head. I think it was there on Keyes. Hasn't been much in the game, but great strength here from Keyes as he has this ball. Head towards the 20. Michal Daly is trying to close him down, but on the run, Keyes takes a shot. That's a great score from Owen Keyes. But Pat, Owen Keyes has been quiet. We know that his size, his strength, never mind his ability. Hasn't been much in the game so far but you know that's a good point it might get him back into yeah things. it's a great score but he's been well marshaled by the defence in Collinsham yeah long puck out down it again looking for Daly here Daly puts up the hand but Cormac Boyle sees the breaking ball but then David Williams steps in in front of Robbie Grabber Gary Grabber the shot is in the net oh oh the man knows where the net is it's that man Derek McNicholas but Credit there to David Williams, a brilliant ball, great work on the breaking ball, shrugged off Gary Gravel, lovely handball, and into the top corner. What a score! What a goal from the from the the gears of Borough Harrier trying to respond again. Killian Doyle is under pressure, and John Egan there on the cornerback, Daniel Riley, pack up back and talk us through that goal. Yeah, it was a, it was an opportunist ball that dropped in between two Raharney men, Cormac Boyle and, and Robbie Greville. And neither, both hesitated. David Williams got in, took the ball, passed to Derrick and a bullet to the top corner. Super goal for Colin Sam. In the driving seat now. Yeah, the ball is over in the middle of the field. Brendan Dial had an opportunity here to get a shot away, but good work there by Joey Boyle. But Boyle, the Dial on the ground, flicks the ball away from the Raharney man again. And the Gales are struggling and fighting to get possession in there. Going to ground there. Well, again... The Gales went fighting as if their lives depended on who has it. No one able to get clean possession. Go on the ground, the referee is looking on to see who it's been edged closer and closer, but then a hit comes in there on the lock lane, gives man, he's put out over the sideline. Good shoulder charge there from Jim while Karen ball has gone out over the sideline and Kieran Doyle is going to take it, but Kieran Doyle has been very quiet in this second half pad, but Gales men in the driving seat, two goals and thirteen. There's nineteen, fifteen for Raharney, we're sixteen minutes into the second half. Yeah, Collins Sound are fighting for their lives. Raharney are expecting things to happen. You got to go and make them happen. The Last goal was a typical example. Two Raharney men leaving it to one another and David Williams robs them, sticks it across to Derrick and you've seen a super result. Yeah, the ball on Brian McGrath, almost on possession, on keys again. Lachlan Galesman steps in in front of him, stops him getting the ball then and two to one, the Galesman really up for this at this stage. But Raharney, they won't go down without a fight. The ball is flicked back out towards Kieran Doyle Kieran doesn't get it but the Gales fighting for it Owen Daly is there Tommy to referee yeah. anything touched on the ground it looks like the signal is and this is an important free pat and important for yeah. Kieran Doyle and for Harry to get this score get them back to a one score game 2.13 to 15 with 15 scores apiece it's been a very intriguing exciting game two great goals I like the whole thing up down especially from Derek McNicholas yeah if Raharney just steady the ship now and can get it back close I would feel that Colin Sound will get a little bit nervous going down the home stretch so it'll be interesting to see what he does with this one yeah 17 on the clock that's Killian strokes this one in no point I don't think good. No, no alternative with the goals was signaling it straight away the down was going across the front of his goals and that's exactly what happened and after 17 minutes and 20 seconds, it is the Galesman who are in the lead. It's Noel Connolly. gets us underway. He's looked for the Twin Towers. This time it's Tommy Dial. He goes high. He doesn't get it. But the ball is broken there. Tommy almost had a chance to get it again. Again, Galesman fighting. I think Derek McNicholas is at the south there. Arm around his back to the borders. But David Williams steps in. And he gets it. And off his right hand. Fires in. Dangerous ball dropping in. Is it going to go wide over? Pity there that that one just had a little bit too much on it. It was a low percentage shot there Pat from the side then yeah. off his back foot and such but again it's always going to be difficult to score from there but Colin Sounder really up for this really up for it yeah. super catch there on, 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 on keys. keys a great catch there now and a free hurl across him there certainly a foul there on the number 13 there as he was heading across in centre but 
Kieran Doyle again. He's waiting for his twin brother to come out and take it again. Just this is a crucial one now for Irony because we cannot afford to, 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 to miss any more. My count is to have at least 12 wides. Yeah, four, four between them. 18 and a half minutes on the clock. Killian this time, he's a couple of metres inside. The lock lane gain is 65 as he gets ready to take this shot. Doyle lifts it and he strikes it. This time I think it's on target. The signal is inside is from the one umpire to the other. That's inside the upright. We're back to a one score game. Two goals and 13, that's 19 points. Two Loch Lane Gales, 16 for a Harney. Yeah. Almost still 19 minutes on the clock. Still plenty of time. 12, well, at least 12 minutes. Well, Connery goes long. Tommy Dyle is oh. trying to get on the breaking ball, but Michal Daly, a lovely little bass back out to the man that was just been introduced. That's the number 19, Aaron Kennedy. But again, Aaron snapshot there. Yeah. Nothing from it. And Aaron McHugh is back in again here, ready with the puck out. Again, there's plenty of space over on that far side of the field if he wants to go there, but he doesn't. He decides to come down here towards the 65. Where my ball broken down inside. Nice little flick away there by John Egan. Gets it back to Dara Quamer. Quamer off his left hand. The other number six is Robbie Grebbin. He was fighting for but Connor Boyle trying to sweep in around him. And his pocket picked there, and Derek is onto it. Very, very close to the sideline. Ah, oh, lovely footwork from, from Derek McNeil. Gives it back inside to Daly. Daly fires it in. Oh! I'm, ru I'm running out of superlatives, Pat, for this man on daily because Superlative. Derek, I think, it was excellent. Gave it back daily. Hardly as much room in the, in the telephone box to take it on the stick and straight fire it over the bar. Great score again. Super the score. Collins Sound have the ascendancy at the moment, and Owen Daly is the man. Get it to him. Get it into him. He's he knows where the goals is. Here on dial this time. Fires it in. Grabbed inside there by Brian McGrath. He's coming in. He's carried in. The hurl is gone. He takes a shot. Oh! What a goal! What a finish from the number 19, Brian McGrath. He took the ball in the air. We know how good he is in the air. He took on that Lachlan Gales defence. He backed himself, buried it in the bottom of the corner of Noel County's net. And even a goalkeeper of his quality, they hardly seen it going by him. Game on, big time. 20 to 19. As they hardly win the puck out again. Joey Boyle fires it down the field. Killian is on the breaking ball inside. But Noel Carnegie is right there and Noel is there to shepherd it out. Pat will go back to the world in that goal. Oh, I mean, superb. He, this guy, I said it before, he's a great man to catch a ball. He caught it, got away, three men around him. He backed himself at an angle and a super, super goal in the bottom corner. Game on. Puck out is looking for Tommy Dial down this side of the field. David Hickey gets a stick on it, but it's broken down. There's a chance here on the run there for the number 19, Aaron Kennedy. And again, a lovely response there again from the Gamesman. They've gone back two up again, Pat. Beautiful strike from Aaron. I know he didn't force the ball. He just stroked the ball. Beautiful. Perfect strike over the bar. That'll get the Gales' confidence back up again now. 21 and a half minutes on the clock is Aaron McHugh. This time he heads over to the terrace side and grabbed over there very well there again by Devon Hill. Devon takes it on, carries it in. Dummies takes it back into the hand, but then into traffic. Almost lost it and then gives it back here and Shane Williams intercepts and Shane Williams has fired it down here. Great catch again by Daly. Knocked out of his hand there. Conor McHugh is there for his side. Leaves it on there now to the number nine. That's Gary Grab it. Grab a long ball inside here. Oh, lovely take in there in front of the goals. I think that's John Egan and Egan coming out with the ball. Tripped as he was coming away with it there and does very well. Gets the free for his side. Gets a clap in the back from his right from his half back teammate there. And Noel Connolly is out here thinking about going short with it. But Noel will just use his experience to slow the things down. 22 on the clock. Two goals and 15 for the Gales. That's 21. 116 for a Harney. 17 scores apiece, but two between them. As Noel Connolly is ready again to launch this one right down the field, it goes. Derek McNicholas is under this one. Up goes his hand, doesn't get it because it's broken down. And David Hickey reading the break there, fires it down. But Brendan Doyle steps across, one touch, and it's into his hand, lays it off to Williams. Williams has a look at the post, takes a shot, it's dropping in. McHugh needs to be careful, keeps his eye on it, does very well under the crossbar there, and lays it off quickly to Conor oh. McHugh. But McHugh dispossessed as he was coming out there. Good work there by Aaron Kennedy. Aaron. 
the Gales have three men there one of them is Daly Daly takes a shot oh he, he's ran out of luck on this one there's another sub out to be introduced down here it's the number 21 the to 21 is Thomas Kennedy yeah an opportunity there for Colin Sound that's our young McHugh had possession after a good catch by Aaron McHugh simple pass got bundled over Michal Daly or Owen Daly struck it out well wide yeah, Philly Riley making his way off. Philly was listed at start at number two, but he's been out around the middle of the field all throughout the game. So the sub in there is Thomas Kennedy. But we'll watch as Aaron McHugh gets his underway again. This time his target is Keyes. On Keyes goes high. Ball breaks down. Picked up by Kieran Doyle. Kieran, a lovely one-handed pass on to Devon Hill in space. Devon, his first option is to come forward but he comes into a little bit of traffic there and the lock lane gives defenders there come back in and Dara Quammer what a long relief and clears it's down on top of Daly again oh there was a ball ball must broke inside there but Gary Robbie Grebel has it looks up and sees that Hickey is spare here on his left hand side Hickey backs himself fires it in but I think the more drawn from the crowd there and Another wide there for a Harney as David Hickey, he backed himself. He's new set at pad at half time. He's normally good for a score or two, but yeah. not finding the range today. A long so way far. out that time. There's no need to go for a score there. The inside line, the, and that inside line is dangerous with Killian and Young McGrath. But Devon Hill got swarmed there for the last opportunity. Puck out has gone this side of the field. This time Tommy Doyle goes up, tries to get a stick on it and knock it down. But David Hickey is on the breaking ball, fires it down the line, it goes. And it's gathered here by Devon Hill. Devon, he's a tricky customer, trying to get away from his man. Why has he been fouled? Referee doesn't say so, allows him to get the ball. He steps away from a tackle. Hill has been absolutely, he had to work long and hard there. The two half backs, number five. Uh, John Egan and Shane Williams both had a pop at him there but he did very well there as he carried it forward and gets the free furry side and another opportunity here for Killian Doyle yeah this, this guy Davin Hill he may not be a great score getter but he's absolutely very good at winning possession and finding the man his pace but he earned his free there yeah his first option every time Pat is a take on his opponent yeah. and he, he drew the free that time and this time Killian fires in we just had to watch that one there it's he's gone over the bar Lovely score again from Killian, and we're back to a one-point game. Five Let minutes to go. This is going to test Collins' hound their nerves. What can they hold up? Can they stay at what they're doing? Yeah, Noel Connolly has gone this side again. Tommy Doyle goes high, gets a hand on it. Derek McNichols is there to help him. It breaks, and Doyle shortens the stick. <laughs> Well, that answer, that gives you one of your answers, Pat. That's a great response there from, yeah. from Jogger Doyle. You need to get your shooters on the ball. You need to get your big players on the ball. And Tommy Doyle is your big player. Yeah, the puck out. No time to draw breath here as it's fired out. Battled away there by the locked in Gales fan. Oh, very, very close to the ground there, Kieran Doyle. And then Tommy the Jogger steps in. And Derek. The ball is with Derek. About to be hooked there. He does very well. Throws a dummy, maybe took a little bit too much over and the ball picked up here by Diona Heron and all fired in. It's a fourth race here between Dan Higgins and Killian Dyle. Dan does very well, gets it from his opponent, comes forward, a good long hand pass. Ball flicked on, but it's flicked on out over the sideline. Brendan Dyle there trying to make sure that the Raharney man didn't get the ball into his hand and flicked it away, but unfortunately. Just goes out over the sideline. Two goals and 16, 22. One goal and 17 for a Harney. That's 20. 26 and a half minutes on the clock. As Ona Heron, who has been very, very quiet throughout this game, he's going to take this time ball over in the middle of the field. He's looking around to see what's available. Cuts it, cuts it low in the space. Who's going to react first? Devon Hill does. Devon steps away from the ball. Johnny Egan immediately comes in and takes it from him. Gives it off to Shane Williams. Shane backed himself, fired it in. Dropping, dropping. McHugh has to be careful in the post there. He does very well. He was right there between the crossbar and the upright. But he, he was steady under it and he wins it and gives it to Robbie Gravel. Gravel switches the play. Gone over the far side of the field. Oh, great catch over there by McGrath again. What a man. The whole of But again, the Gales defenders right back there on that. It's Daniel Riley who dispossessed him and Riley fires it down the far side of the field. Has it gone out over the sideline? It is indeed. It's out over the sideline. Two and a half minutes on the clock. All eyes will be on the referee. But haven't had too many breaks in this no. second half, Pat. So be a very small amount of injury time. But if this Raharney are putting the pressure on, but the Gales are holding, or they're holding steady. They're not committing into it. They're just holding, waiting for their opportunity to clear it. But some of these clearings are going astray. Here on Dial is going to take this line ball. He's looking in and cuts it in. Nice ball, dropping right in here. Ball broken down. It's the Gales men that have it again. Shane Williams bounces off a tackle. And then a sweet, 
struck clearance. Tommy Dyle is taking it on the run. Can he get the strike in? Can he get the shot in? Oh, they're looking at it. Oh, can he what? Tommy Dyle came right across in front of his teammate and a Harney man on the run and without steady himself, looked up, had a look at the post and we're back to a three-point game. The ball is fired out again over the far side of course. Picked up over there. But, but, by Gary Greville, Gary comes inside, but again, ball, heavy hit coming in there as a Raharney man with the ball there as he calls a free there. It's going to be a free, a chance for Killian. He probably will take the score. We just Tommy Doyle definitely has come of age in this second half. Superb clearance by Shane Williams, who's really stick work is immaculate at the back. Super catch on the run by Tommy and dissected the, po the post. Brilliant point. That's his fourth for from play for today. Yeah. At the other end, Killian Dyle is about to take this one, and Killian fires it in and fires it over the bar. And it's well documented. Tommy was away and missed a lot of the earlier rounds of the championship path, but his addition to this side has been a huge boost in the sport semi final and final. And you know, he's been very influential. Four points, as you said, from playing hours. We enter into the last minute of the 30. We'll wait to see what the signal is. And he's gone looking for Dyle again. He gets the hand up, but this time it breaks off and, and it's picked up there by Kieran, Kieran Dyle. And Kieran, route one, fires it in, dropping in. Keys is under. Keys goes high. Ball breaks off his hand. Who's on the break? Second ball, it's crucial. It's a Gales man that goes to ground, but he doesn't get a free. His own keys has picked it up, and on the turn, keys fires it in and fires it over the bar. Owen Keyes has been excellent, Pat, when his ball has gone in his direction. He won the ball there, probably had no right to get it on the turn. This time on his right hand, fires it over the bar. Yeah, Puck out is crucial. Yeah, it was a terrific score, but a great clearance by Kieran Doyle from the half back line. One between them. Could we dare say, could we be back here another Sunday? The puck out. David Hickey has it very, very close to the side. The first time down to Joy Boyle, but it's gone out over the sideline. I think Joy might have got a nudge on one, minute. one oh. minute. Oh, well, we said a path. There was very little, very little breaks in this second half. The line ball, and I'm sure the Gales will be in no hurry to hit this line ball. The supporters, <laughs> the supporters, and their hands, heads in their hands, as whatever. As this line ball is over there. It's a Michal Daly is going to take it. I see Tommy Doyle in around the goals with his hand in the air. He's looking for it, and that's exactly the target. He gets it. Up of his man. Surely been fouled. Shrugs it off. Gives it inside. The Gales have it again. Oh, what a call. Oh, I thought the foul was committed there. Is there going to be one last chance for the Raharneyman? The clocks that were into the last 30 seconds as Kieran Doyle has gone back to take this free. Gives it absolutely all he can. Broke it up. Killian Doyle has it. Coming inside. Takes it. Oh, 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 oh my God. What a goal. What a finish. I think a lesser player would have said, put it over the bar, tie it up. He didn't. He didn't even think of it. He loved it. Oh, heartbreak for the Galesmen. Heartbreak here. 2.19 to 2.17. We're 20 seconds over it. The, the, uh, incredible, an incredible. First and foremost, we go back to the free. There was a dubious free below in the corner for Raharney. Kieran Doyle struck it up. It broke kindly for Killian. He had nothing on his mind, only a goal. And most players would have tapped it over the bar. An incredible goal. Puck out, the referee is allowing the play to go on. The old nearly is under, it goes off his hand. Who has it? Derek McDicklis has it, trying to get away. Surely, yes, he has been fouled. Don't know what the difference is in that one on the one area, but it's a free. This one is inside the D. At this stage, Raharney will probably put everyone that's available in on that goal. Rockland Gales thought about introduced the sub but I don't think it's going to happen that had all out the window as it's going to be Derek McNicholas we've seen him before he's going with the ball. He's he, must he must have gained at least 10 yards Mickey Dan has copped him I think he's going to send him back a little bit it's all down to this it's all down to this this is a Hail Mary if you go Three, two between them 219 for the Harneyman 217 for Lock Lane Gales Derek McNicholas with the whole of the town of Raharney back in there on that course 
Because it's out to 21, the Gales can get men in there. He needs to keep this loan off. He needs to get the shot. He's coming for rifles. Oh, it's off the post. Oh, oh my God. Off the post, straight into the hands of Gary Greville, who hand passes away from the danger area. Ball goes in again. They're fighting for it. Who has it? It's gone over a 45. And still, with one minute of additional time added, we're still here. We're still. It has to be the longest one minute I've ever come across. We're up now playing two extra minutes on top of the one. I don't know. One, Mickey, Mickey one last watch. chance. Has the referee lost the watch? There's a lot of the Harney people down there asking that same question. Their hearts are still in their mouths. They have to defend this. Derek McNicholas fired that one in. I think it went off the inside of the post into Gary Gravel's hand as Shane Williams drops it in. Too Has it enough on it? No, it's broken down. Too I already have it. That's probably going to be in. It is indeed. And it's fitting that that man, Killian Doyle, ends up with the ball in his hand because he was responsible, probably solely responsible for taking this game away from Lock Lane Gales. Pat, what a county final. What a performance. What, I don't know can we describe it. We're going to have to draw a breath here to think about that, how that fan finished. Well, it's, I said it earlier in the game. There's no sentiment in sport. It's so cruel on Collinstown. They've done everything right. They seem to have the game under control coming down the home stretch. And one little bit of opportunism fell to the right man in Raharney, Killian Doyle, who went for the juggler, and he found it. And then when you go back down the field, in at a time that nobody could understand where it came from, a superb strike by Derek McNicholas with all of Raharney in the square, came somehow came off the post and didn't go in. So you'd have to say Hardy's congratulations, obviously, to Raharney, but so, so sorry for the way Collins Town went down today. They brought everything that's good in Hurland to this game. A fantastic game of Hurland, huge entertainment, but there's only going to be one winner, and sentiment is not to be found in sport. One goal and 11 points, I make it, off the stick of the number 11. We know all about his quality. We know what he can do. He's been a leader for Westmead Hurlum for the last number of years. An all-star nominee last year, of course. What a quality player he is. We said during the commentary that a mere mortal would have probably just been happy to put that ball over the bar to tie the teams up. But instead, no. He went for it. He, he went for it. He had enough space to fire a shot. Even a goalkeeper of no O'Connor's quality couldn't get near it. as a net rippled in there as well. Um, I, I don't know, Pat. That game had everything. Absolutely. You know, like, I mean, Raharney must have thought it was drifting and drifting away from them. Especially when Tommy Doyle scored off a fantastic point. And all of a sudden, you see a two-point game or a one-point game going down into injury time is very dangerous. But Raharney found the right man. But I would go back to the free, and I'd like to look at it again in the far corner. where it lo I thought, personally, it could have been a free in for Lachlan Gales, but it was a free out. Kieran Doyle, a good man on the ball, huge strike. The ball broke kindly for Killian. A little bit of space opened up. Nine players out of ten would have popped it over the bar. But this chap goes for the juggler all the time whether it be county or club and he found the net by beating one of the best goalkeepers in the county yeah. over the last number of years and it was a cruel cruel way for Collins to lose but in fairness to them they fought back very very unlucky with Derek's strike I, I'd have to look at it again but I think it came back up the post could have went in but it didn't go in got a 65 65 didn't work out yeah it's, it's, it's heartbreaking for the men from Collinstown and I think Raharney players down here they'll all know each other and they know that they probably just stole it at the very end you know they had plenty of opportunities had a lot of wides had Raharney but these these Lachlan Gales men they did their club proud Pat they can absolutely go out of here with their heads held high they did not roll over they just gave it their all Tommy Doyle was immense for his side I thought David Williams and Owen Daly in particular four points in that second half he was immense Derek McNichols got that goal which looked like it was going to be maybe enough to get them over the line every one of them but unfortunately not to work out 
We're going to finish up here in the commentary box. I want to thank Pat O'Brien for his expert analysis all through the game. Really enjoyed it. I hope the viewers did as well. My name is Ray Gavin. I'm going to draw a breath here because this is a fabulous ending. We're going to go to ads. We'll be back down for post-game analysis with the lads down on the sideline. I'll try and get do my best to get Joe Flanagan, the, the Raharney manager, get him in for a quick word or two. But for our viewers at home, we'll say goodbye from the commentary box and we'll go on to ads. TEG, proud sponsors of TEG Cusick Park. Serving aviation, biopharmaceuticals and medical industries across the globe. TEG has been to the fore in the fight against COVID-19 with our customers and partners. A local business employing local people. Visit teg.com forward slash careers to learn more. Wishing all our GAA patrons a safe passage through the championship. Stevens Coaches, proud sponsor of Wesley GA Hurling Championships. MJ Stone Building and Development, proud sponsor of Westmead GA. And you, what do you do? Uh, it's a bit complicated to explain. Hey, hey. You know, I still didn't get exactly what your job is. That's what I do. New Renault Arcana E-Tech Hybrid. Winner. Irish Medium Crossover SUV in the 2022 Car of the Year Awards. Yeah, welcome back to TEG Cusick Park. And like the rest of us, Paul, Alan and Paul and Damien, uh, catch your breath. It's just been that sort of a day. But, you know, congratulations to Roharney, but you have to have to feel for Lachlan Gales. Really, really have to feel so, so sorry for them. With that, with that late, late goal. Oh yeah, look, that was, like, what a finish! I know I said at halftime, <laughs> I'm waiting for the game to spark into life. But the last five minutes were certainly absolutely phenomenal. Like, ah, look, that was a phenomenal effort by the Gales. Like moment of magic. Like just ball breaks, Killian, and there was nothing wrong with his leg. There was no injury. He was just straight in and an absolute and, bullet and, and in Damien, he had only one thing on his mind. The very minute he got it, yeah. we were sitting up there and we were all at the one time going, he's going for goal, he's going for goal. Could have tapped it over the level again, but he had only one thing in his mind. Yeah, finals, are, I suppose, are about moments of inspiration and that was it. Uh, I have to say, Raharney, huge slice of luck with that last free and a massive question mark about where it was taken from. But sometimes you need fortune, and fortune certainly favoured Raharney today. Yeah, and Alan, we say we say it like uh, it needs it, but look, we're going. Sorry, we'll talk to you in a second. We're going straight over the presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, as I say now, it's 100,000 welcomes to you, to TG Cusick Park today, for a wonderful spectacle. I want to put your, put your hands together, first of all, for a fantastic display by our two teams. Currently, <laughs> one of the best county finals in all our football that I have been lucky to witness. Cogrone, Ocree, the Bail of Lena, Cogarticus, the Rahane. I start by thanking, congratulating Mickey Dan Murtha and a brilliant display of referees and thank all the officials they had waiting for me a fantastic job today. To the staff here in Cusick Park for the pitch looking so well for such a brilliant spectacle to follow. Thank you, gentlemen. Today I'd like to acknowledge our stewards who man their stations week in, week out. Thank you, stewards, for contributing so much to our games. Today's game, what can I say? Brilliant display of all that is best in gay games. From 
two fantastic teams who kept us on the edge of our seat, our seats right up to the final minute. One by a brilliant piece of skill taken by a wonderful hurler. I really want to commiserate with Lockheed Gales, taking you away to get back to a county final. Don't leave it lo as long again to return here. This is your stage. You belong on this stage. Congratulations, Rahani. You had to dig deep, but when it was needed, you dug deep. And at the end of the day, you're worthy winners. So a huge congratulations to you. I want to present the Man of the Match Award first. So I'm going to ask Paul Donovan. It's the Paul Donovan Award, and he picked Owen Daly as Man of the Match. So Paul, will you present our award to Owen Daly?
Robbie Gravel with uh, conveying the sentiments of all wearing blue hair today, I suppose. And uh, Alan, we were cut off just in the middle of it there, but you know, coming to you or coming to man, Hatton had his greatest game, I suppose, up to that, but kept him in with freeze and stuff like that. But when he was needed most, when we thought he might knock over a point, what does he do? He just takes it on, bang, back in the net, game over, and the cup has gone back, Joris down well. Yeah, that's it. it like, ruthless forwards and the best forwards in the country will always... Um, will always go for the goal when they get the chance and in fairness he had a chance to go it in and he uh, really put uh, he put the nail into the coffin of poor, uh, of poor Lachlan Gales but to be fair to Lachlan Gales they were outstanding today very unfortunate you could, some people would say that they were the better team on the day lost but listen at the end of the day it's all about putting your chance away and Killian both away at the end yeah and I suppose Paul we talked at half time about the chances that Harney had missed but the Gales missed a few handy ones in the second half that really would have put them out of sight. Now, I know they scored some great scores, but they missed a few that really would have put them out of sight. Yeah, I know there was a couple of frees now. I, there were a bit of an issue for them. Um, if the truth be told, there was one or two in the first half, another two or three in the second half, and then a couple of either balls dropping short or, or, or going wide. And, you know, I suppose when you need to break that breakthrough, you kind of need, like, a lot of things fell well for, for the Gales today, which kind of need everything to kind of just really just to tip that scales and get over and, and get a bit of daylight. And, like, a two-point lead is a dangerous lead, or, yeah. you know, or a one-point yeah. lead is a dangerous yeah. lead. And, um, you know, it's just the break of a ball. Like, you know, that ball, I think it broke off Devon Hill. It just, like, fell right in front of Killian with, you know, oceans of space for him to run into. If it broke millimeter the other direction we wouldn't be having this conversation you know that's, no, yeah. that's what and, we and were saying though like there. if if you're ever going to win a championship you need to get a bit of luck and Raharney got a massive slice of luck today at the very yeah. end of the match well Alan you said it at the start of the broadcast you know you can hurl as well as you like but you do need that bit of luck and, and there's no question in my mind that Raharney got the break of the ball today at the right time you know it's heartbreaking for the Gales but you know it's, it's a 60 minute game you know, maybe even 65 minute game. You've got to keep going till the end of the game. And unfortunately, when when we when they read the results from this year's championship, it'll show that Raharney won by 219 to 217. So it's not going to make any bit of difference at all. And unfortunately, much as we commiserate with the Gales, it, it, that's that's the end story. Yeah, listen. At the end of the day, they, they, it is a 60-minute game. Unfortunately for Lachlan Gales, they, it just it just didn't go their way at the end. They, they put up a massive fight, like a massive credit. Like the game was made as good as it was because of Lachlan Gales and Lachlan Gales only. They were absolutely outstanding today. Probably deserved their victory, to be fair. But at the end of the day, it's a 60-minute game, and Killian but paid to that at the very end. Yeah, and I'm here with your fan. and look at your, you know, with with seven or eight minutes to go it was looking bleak let's be honest about this but it just shows the character of player and the character of man that you have in Raharney and you know I, I said this at the start of our broadcast you don't read Raharney till you're going out the gate and the referee is the whistle blowing and you're ahead in the game no you don't know that's Killian Dial. probably had a hard enough day you know from from play you know with his wides and stuff and uh, he just showed the character he has and you know, that goal he got in the, in the last couple of minutes was just mind-boggling really you know the safest thing to do is probably tip it over the bar you know maybe take the draw and then maybe you may be would, would you have been satisfied at that stage if he'd have gone and popped it over the bar and maybe get another day out of it I probably would have been satisfied you know i'd have maybe taken a chance that we might have won the next ball maybe and put it over yeah. the bar you know you'd have been you'd be guaranteed to be back in the game you know like, like they have a great goalkeeper too you know and they he blocked the penalty like earlier on in the second half so you know, Killian just showed his metal and showed showed his skill and, and 
and really the character that, that he has deep down, you know. Yeah, and, and, and even I suppose, Jar, when the game was going away from you, you know, substitutions at half time, they made a huge difference. Brian McGrath in particular got a wonderful goal. You know, when the game is going away from you, it, it's it's character that, at that stage. You know, you can you you can coach all you want, and you can tell lads what to do and show them what to do. But at the end of the day, it's it's what's in the belly, it's what's in the heart that makes the difference. And look at those men stood up for you today. They did. Brian McGrath was, uh, I suppose, bitterly disappointed that he didn't get the start. You know, he's been the last maybe five or six weeks been struggling with kind of an ankle injury, and and then he had football commitments, and we just felt that. You know, he was a great man to come on in the second half, and, and he proved it. And he probably and and Devon and Devon as well. Devon won a quite a lot. Of he's an unbelievable ball winner, Devon. You know, if he if we could just get get the, the finishing touches into him, like he, we we have a serious hurl on our hands. But Brian, you know, showed his determination and his character too. You know, he got us back into the game too with that goal, and he won some vital ball kind of out here in the half forward line when we weren't winning it. You know, yeah. compared to what their half forward line were doing to our half back line, you know, we weren't we weren't winning half the amount of ball that we should have been. You know, and, so. and you're, I, I know, you know, from a, a, your champions, it's it's all celebratory. You have to feel a little bit of a oh, sympathy yeah. for Lachlan really Gales. Yeah. I mean, coming in here. Yeah. Coming in here, major underdogs, and they put you to the pin of your collar. Oh, they did. They, they gave a tremendous performance. You know, I probably look at draw today. Probably would have been the fair result. You know what I mean? After we got back into it, uh, look, they have to take great credit for making this an unbelievable county final here. Probably one of the best here for a while. We were probably blessed with the weather we had. You know, and like we, we bet them by by 13, 14 points earlier on in the year, and they showed the character. And and Jogger Dial coming back from America, he he. He showed the quality of hurler he is, you know, he really he really caused his bother the whole half forward line, Dave Williams and Young Daly in the far side man the match. You know, they they, they have a great team, you know, they must be so disappointed like we're shell shocked is probably shell shocked, yeah. yeah, we were we were we were going to be shell shocked really, you know, if, yeah. if, if we if we didn't get over the line today, I'll get the draw at least. So I can just I, I, I myself lost the county final at home in Tipperary, you know, I yeah. know exactly I know exactly it's what they're going through, yeah. you know, it's yeah. heartbreaking. And to lose it the way they did, you know, your heart would go out to them, you know, in fairness. Yeah, but look at it's a Harney's day, it's, it's been yeah. a while, you know, you, you you have to take the rough with the smooth. Yeah. Last year wasn't their year. This year a different management, different setup, you know, you brought a, a completely different feel to it. But as as an outsider will say coming into Westmead, how did it feel to you and the see the quality of hurling that we have here in the you county? Well we have some serious quality here in, in this county, you know, it was just it was just the, the the part of the year was a bit fragmented, you know. Like we we have a lot of people that a lot of players that love their football too, you know. Yeah. And, and I think it is a football county, but it does hold back our hurling too, you know. Yeah, like yeah. way we we your whole panel just disappears, you know, on football week. But but look, uh, it's a credit to Westmeath that they're playing playing like the high standard they're playing at, you know. Yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. we are looking forward to now, like probably Lachlan Leicester Leicester to playing, yeah. playing Dublin champions. You know, yeah. I, I gave a little bit of experience coaching in Dublin and I'm looking forward to it. You know, I think we can I think we can match them if we bring our A game, you know, I really well, do. Jar, and we're looking forward for tonight. To congratulations. Enjoy the celebration. Congratulations because they're a hard August congratulations August Cormila Maga, thank you for joining us. Jar Jar Flanagan. Lads, if I can go back to you, look at um Jar very magnanimous in 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 victory there, I suppose it's it's, it's easy for Alan, you know from in defeat though, you know, Joey Williams, you got a feel for him. Uh, uh, a, a Gales man through and through, you know, has won championships himself, would die for the purple and gold jersey. And with, you know, the game up, he's looking at lifting a trophy that, you know, that they've been starved of for so long. And uh, Raharney just steal it from under you, as, 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 as sometimes happens. Yeah, like, listen, it, it was, it, it was at the end of the day, Raharney would agree that the they robbed them at the end and they got they got a chance and in fairness fell to the right man and he bowed away but as for Joey Williams he'll be he'll be devastated but he has to be massively proud of this bunch of players they put in some shift today some shift all year like Johnny got beaten by one team all year and that was Raharney twice yeah. and probably very very unlucky not to win today but he'd have to be very very proud of this Lachlan Gales team as you said and everyone else is saying but it wouldn't be said with, with the three bigger three bigger so called clubs at the start of the year yeah. Raharney, Clunkill and Cass and we would have been very fearful of Lachlan Gales and a few other teams as well you have to treat everyone with respect and in fairness Lachlan Gales have gathered a, m a mountain of respect off every other club in the county today and they're very very unfortunate not to be bringing home the cup yeah and Damien look Raharney are back you know they, they had a lean year last year we, we, we talked about it in a lot of our podcasts indeed a lot of our, our you know a lean year it, it, you kind of have to build up you know that that 
Raharney feeling again. You know, we know what they're like. They're diehard hurling people. They love their hurling out there in Raharney and Jorastown and Caloocan. You know, the football in invaded it a small bit, I suppose, over the last number of years. But, you know, you have to give them great credit. Time and again, they just keep coming back. They're, 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 they're like a bad smell. They just won't go away. Well, I suppose ultimately it came down to quality and experience, and Raharney had that in abundance. We said beforehand, you know, about the level of experience they were bringing to the final here a couple of years ago, only winning it, winning the title, and the quality they had in the forward line. Um, you know, and in fairness to Lockley and Gales, really show up today. No, but in fairness it, to Lockley and Gales, took the substitutions really to make a bit of absolutely. a change about it. But you need impact off the bench as well, yeah. and that was crucial. Brian McGrath came in and had a huge impact. And let's not forget, uh, Noel Connolly was excellent in the goals. And uh, Lachlan Gale survived a major scare in the first half. Yeah. And then penalty that penalty save in the second half. half. So, on balance, I suppose, okay, the circumstances in which it was won was very dramatic, yeah. perhaps controversial, I would argue. But uh, you can't argue that Raharney were worthy winners either. Yeah, and Herney, look at, looking at, uh, at the Lachlan Gale team, you know, so many players gave absolutely everything. I, I thought some of them were absolutely outstanding. I thought Dara Quamer at centre back had a brilliant game. Shane Williams at wing half back, a position I, I wouldn't know him at. Their midfield was excellent. Their forward line, particularly in that second half, Owen Daly gets man of the match. David Williams probably missed a few frees that he'll regret over the weekend, but he he can he can find solace in the fact that he had a brilliant game as well. The jogger as, as a wing half back, we wondered where he was going to play, but it did work. Yeah, Absolutely. no, like, I mean, in, in, in fairness, there was so many standout performances from even, I, I'd say, the lesser-known players like Dan Higgins was absolutely outrageous. He, he, he had a super game there today. And, um, you know, he, he really, really stood out on daily. Like, everything that, that it just kind of just fell into his hand. like And, and then these boys, the, the two gravels, like, were just on all sorts of ball and all sorts of breaks. Like, you know, and, and sometimes you kind of look for, you know, this major standout player or somebody who's going to like set the game alight or whatever you know a lot of it is just the hard dirty honest to god work that goes on and just winning that dirty ball and moving on and a lot of time we look for you know be it Killian scoring the wonder goal at the end or somebody else pulling off a great score Derek scoring an absolutely super goal over his shoulder a lot of it is down to just the hard graft around the field and I think that needs to be recognised as well yeah and I'm joined by two of the victorious team here this afternoon Killian Doyle, uh, star of, of Westmead and indeed of his club, Raharney, and of course Robbie, uh, the name synonymous of course with Raharney, you know, and, and you know, it's a family thing now to collect this cup, to go up and collect this cup now at this stage, I think you're the third in the family that have gone up to collect this cup. Yeah, yeah, it's a great honour to be captain and especially lift the cup anyway, but yeah, third brother to, to, to captain Raharney to a winning championship, so. Have you any more coming along now, do we have to worry about a fourth? Oh, I think there's a stop there now, let's... <laughs> One comes out somewhere I don't know, but, <laughs> but no, it's a great honour and proud for the family, proud, proud day for the family. Yeah, yeah. And look at you said your speech there. It, this, this is about, and I've often said this. This is about parish, this is about community. You know, football has taken over a little bit as well. There with Kilkenny as well. You're in your duty club. You know, to lift the trophy, it, it takes an awful lot of guts and it takes an awful lot of uh, heart and, and, and you know, and dedication for it. Oh yeah, definitely. It takes all community to bring. You see, before the game, the passion lads, Pat Cunny and them boys bring. Every tree, he's at every single training session, then by just drive it on in the, in the background without even knowing. So it's a whole community thing, just bring a massive energy together. And that was one thing we focused on this year and actually helped us. So it was massive. Yeah, and Killian, uh, with 30 seconds to go, there was no, <laughs> there was no only Cusick Park was expecting. Everybody says Killian's going to tap this one over the bar. But just we were sitting in the press box and I said to myself, this fella's going for goal. Was, it, was there ever a point in your mind at all? Uh, if I didn't have a golf trip booked to Spain next weekend, <laughs> I, 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 I probably would have put the ball over the bar. But uh, I know, I know it genuinely. It, it actually did come into my head, put over, but yeah, it just came nice to me, I suppose. And why not? Like you know, I thought that after missing the penalty, it was just great to get a goal from my teammates. I suppose like it was just one of those games where everyone just had a brilliant game. There was no real, apart from I know David Williams had a fantastic game, but it was just one of those probably. It's my fourth championship win, and it's probably the best final I ever played in. In terms of, I actually thought it was a great game of hurling. So, uh, and if the Gales had won it, look, they fully deserved it. So, yeah, just uh, kind of in a bit of disbelief because, uh, like in all honesty, the game won. Yeah, I've done a start from, and even the Raharney, uh, Raharney supporters here, there's, there's an awful lot of disbelief about the fact 
the, the, they're, they're, they're kind of coming to terms with the fact that you won it from a position where it looked over. You know, it, 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 when we seen one minute going up on the board, number one, we were incredulous as to, as to why there was only a minute added on. But at the same time, a free gets caught, uh, as Damien says, disputable <laughs> to say the least. But that's you dim their dims are the breaks, you know. That's the simple reality about it. Yeah, I like uh, people from the outside maybe thought that we were going to come in and just railroad Lock and Gales, but that, that was never going to happen. If we were playing Cast Town or Clonkill today, it wouldn't be as much a surprise to other people outside of yeah. hurling people. They just thought we had to show up and win, but it just doesn't happen like that. And we were genuinely knew that that was going to be the case. And that's the way it turned out. So just because it's locked in Gales and it might, have, it might have been our first final in a while, they thoroughly ter- deserve to be in the position they were in. So uh, if they had won that game, we would have had no complaints. No, and, and look at you look at Magnanimous in defeat. It's easy to be Magnanimous in victory, but Magnanimous in defeat as well. And the Gales, you know, they, they really put it up to it. But at the same time, Raharney just don't do f- losing finals. It's not, it's not in their DNA. You know, y- 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 you fight till the bitter end. I, I, I've seen that down through the years from under 12. Come up. It doesn't make any difference. Once you put on that blue jersey, it's all about the pride of parish and it's all about getting over the line. And it doesn't matter whether it's one point or two point or a lake holder, it doesn't matter like that. It's all about the blue jersey. Uh, yeah, no, like that's exactly it. Like, and it would have been very easy for us to start going for goals, maybe with say five or six minutes to go. But we just felt that if we literally just kept on taking the scores and kept within a scoring range distance, that if we did get a chance for a goal, that we'd either draw the game or go on to win it. It was very important that they go out to say two scores because there just wouldn't be enough time. So it was just vital that we kept it within one or two points. So if we did get a goal, we were in with a chance. Listen, enjoy your golf we trip. We we enjoy your golf trip. Come back to us for yeah. the Leinster Club Championship yeah. where you face the Dublin Champions. Cogardicus, yeah. Cogardicus, yeah. Robbie as well. Congratulations and well done to you. Thanks enjoy so the celebrations. Well done, bud. Great finish. Yeah. Killian Dylan and Robbie Greville there. And look at lads. It's it's been the end. It's been the end of a, a wonderful hurling season, as far as I'm concerned. We've had some wonderful games in the hurling championship this year. Indeed, it's probably one of our last broadcasts here as a. Uh, Airvy TV, and you know we have viewers watching in Australia, we have viewers watching in the United States, in Canada. You know they're texting us in, they're letting us know that they're available. And Paul, if they wanted to see the state of Westmead hurling today, was no better game to get them that. Ah uh, yeah, look, I, like you know, it was an exciting finish, but actually the standard and the quality of some some of what went on out there, maybe some of the shooting was a bit wayward on yeah. occasions for both teams, but actually the quality of what was going on around all of that in terms of the strike and the touch, the movement, you know, the physicality of it, like both teams were in absolutely tip-top condition as well. Like, you know, I mean, you know, and it was just great to see a different name, you know, and I don't mean that any disrespect to Clonkills or the Castle Towns who've been there, there about like, but, you know, I think, like, actually the Gales being here has given a lot of hope to a lot of other clubs, not just the senior level, but other levels, that if they put a lot of effort in and keep developing, they will get their opportunity. And it yeah, will and, and we've seen that this year. Pollard made a bit of a, a good start to the championship there this year as well. I mean, we thought they might be the ones to make the breakthrough as well. We have Oliver Plunkett's coming up now. You know, there's a lot of teams who will take, as Paul said, will take heart from that. But again, it's 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 back to reality next March or April when when they, when when it's down to the nitty gritty and you're you're planning for championship 2020 2024 i beg your pardon you know it, it's it's it, it's one of those days where you know it, it'll seem distant to the lock lane gales boys now but at the same time in in a couple of days time or a couple of weeks time maybe they're thinking you know we're we're not too far away from this yeah and there's a bit of a surreal feeling about it just when the final whistle yeah. goes for lock lane gales because i'm sure they were ready almost Oh, I'd say the bonfires were lit. And, you know, celebrate. But it just goes to show, you know, you just, in the blink of an eye, and that's the fascinating thing about this game. And after, let's be honest, a very poor senior football final where uh, some very poor football was on display. Yeah. Um, the senior hurling yeah, final has quite saved the, the season. Yeah, that, yeah. that was a fantastic match. And, OK, um, in terms of high quality, uh, the shooting probably fell down a little yeah. bit. But... As Paul quite rightly referenced, there was an awful lot more to it. I mean, Derek McNicholas's goal in the second yeah. half, absolutely outstanding. Killian, Killian, Killian Doyle's winning goal, you know, a fitting score to win any county final. And Alan, as, as a manager, I suppose, next year, you know, Castletown will hope to be here on the day, possibly hope to, to win it. There's another couple of teams will take great heart from this. And, you know, it, 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 there's something to shoot at now, I suppose. Is that fair yeah. to say? 
Yeah, absolutely. And, and like uh, Lachlan Gales, they're not going to be happy with just being here. They're going to go full whack out next year and try and say to themselves, we're well in contention of winning this, and, and rightly so. They have a right good outfit there, and they're going to be very, very hard to beat next year. As are Raharney, as are Glencale, Pollard, and even uh, like St. Oliver Plunkett's were the most impressive winners of Senior B that I've seen in a long, long time this evening. Yeah, yeah. So the championship's going to be wide open next year. Uh, there's going to be loads of teams in it. Obviously, I'm going to hope to cast them win it. There's no doubt about that, but at the same time, uh, the standard, West, to say that the one standard one. of <laughs> club hurling in Westmead is uh, it's and, and, and this, like like yeah, we can right, say well, right, a lot of people down through standard, a lot of people down through the years that say that that uh, that football is the number one in this county. At the minute, the standard of club teams in Westmead, the standard level? of club hurling in Westmead is a damn sight higher yeah. than the standard of club football at the minute. Now, obviously, yeah. Lowman's are a, a long way ahead of all, all other clubs now, and they're, and they're worthy champions, And uh, but at the same time, the other clubs in football need to step up to the mark, and we can't just have Lowman's winning it and been there, thereabouts every time. But uh, standard of club hurling in Westmead, it's in a healthy and position. It was a minute. great spectacle and for that. It's very opinion. interesting to see now how they measure up to the Dublin champions in a few weeks' time. Yeah, I, I'm, I, I, I look at it, I, I give them every chance. I think uh, any of the teams that come out of Westmead, I think it's, a, it's maybe a little bit about attitude. But look at, that's for another day. We will have the Leinster Championship coming up here very, very shortly. But look at, from Paul Ahern, from Damien and Alan, my thanks, great thanks to you, to Ollie, to Ger, and indeed to all our pundits and indeed all the people that have been involved with us here on Near VTV this year. We'll probably be around next weekend. We're not 100% sure yet. But uh, Ali, Ali's had to give me the nod there, so we're probably on, on duty again next weekend. You won't have me because I'll be in Wexford supping pints. So we're talk, boys, we're talking about going hurling and everything. I'll be in Wexford supping pints and singing music. But look at for today, it's Raharney's day. It's been St. Lomans in the senior football. It's been a wonderful year so far for us. My great thanks to all involved in Airby TV and indeed the Westmead County Board. In particular, I have to pay special tribute to the, the ginger minger over there. He's looking at me there with glassy eyes, he's going to be a daddy very shortly as well, regardless to the county board, it's been a huge uh, it's been a huge fill up for Westmead to have this and to uh, broadcast all over the country, lads thank you very much for joining us but from all of us here on Airby TV, it's good afternoon it today belongs to the Blues the Deal Siders of Raharney are Westmead County Champions for 2023 <laughs> Proud sponsors of TEG Cusick Park. Serving aviation, biopharmaceuticals and medical industries across the globe. TEG have been to the fore in the fight against COVID-19 with our customers and partners. A local business employing local people. Visit teg.com forward slash careers to learn more. Wishing all our GAA patrons a safe passage through the championship. Seven's Coaches, proud sponsor of Westmead GA Hurling Championships. MJ Stone Building and Developments, proud sponsor of Westmead GA. And you, what do you do? Mm, it's a bit complicated to explain. Hey, hey. You know, I still didn't get exactly what your job is. 